Okay, welcome to the West Seneca School Board meeting. Um, we have an interesting evening tonight. We're having uh, the middle school and high school principals present tonight to tell us what's going on in their buildings. So that will be interesting to hear. Um, and so we're looking forward to that. Okay, uh, Peter, would you like to lead us in the pledge? Hi, Peter. Pledge allegiance to the flag. So we're into our third week, I think it is, for in-person instruction, and my understanding is things are going fairly well, so um, we, uh, we hope that that's the case and the students are excited to be back and the teachers are excited to see them. Okay, uh, we'll have the superintendent's report. Mr. Bystrat. Thank you, Ms. Pierce. Welcome everyone. I just want to also a special welcome to all of our administrators that are gonna be presenting tonight from our high schools and our middle schools and Dr. Merkel from the Academies program. So we've got a good uh, crew over here. So anybody tuning in and anybody physically in the room is in for a good show tonight. Um, yes, Ms. Bears, we're into our third week and you know I've heard a lot of good things. I mean, obviously, uh, a lot of people had to come together within our school community to make this work. You're talking, you know, our teachers, our administrators, you know, all of our CSEA, uh, clerical staff, custodians, bus drivers, families, students. So it doesn't work if everybody's not pulling together on this. So I want to thank all of our folks just for their patience. This is, again, easy to forget that you're in the middle of a pandemic uh, because you've, you've lived it for so long. But uh, I just, you know, of course, really appreciate all the patience that everyone's had with as we've made this adjustment to in-person learning, but it is fantastic to see the kids back in school again. So I just wanted to make sure I commented on that. So um, the other thing too, and this is kind of new and late breaking. Um, so if anybody's been watching, so the uh, county executive uh, yesterday had issued a statement uh, about high school athletics and there was just a meeting with section six. Um, so, you know, expect a, a more, uh, I guess, thorough communication from us tomorrow, but it appears as though they're going to be allowing some of our more, what they call high risk sports like basketball, uh, to continue depending on, uh, individual school districts. So we do have some work to do just to consider, uh, you know, what sports might be appropriate. I will say that there are a number of sports and activities that are currently operating a separate from the school district in town, um, through different organizations like hockey or basketball and whatnot. And, you know, I had, and those numbers, if we were seeing spikes in uh, COVID tests and positivity rates, they'd be reported in our dashboard, and we're not seeing a spike in our dashboard. Uh, so I think that's a good sign. Uh, but, you know, more information to come on that. But I know people are anxious. Uh, the governor announced last Friday that sports could begin uh, starting February 1st, which, you know, everybody's kind of scrambling to make sure that if that's something that, you know, is going to happen, that we just want to make sure we do it safely. So uh, the district will be communicating over the next day or so uh, regarding uh, the resumption of uh, any kind of winter sports. So stay tuned for that. Um, and I think I just, uh, I, from this point, I just wanted to make sure that I took some time. I took a couple of uh, notes over here. I apologize. Um, one of the things I did want to point out, there was a communication uh, that came out today too, and it included about, it's about sports, but it talked about the unified bowling program. I just wanted to clarify, unified bowling is not considered to be a high risk sport, uh, but it is a sport that would be starting probably mid to late February. So it's more just a clarification that if anybody is interested in signing up for that, that uh, the registration period has opened up. So that, that's all it simply was. So I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that it was not classified as a high risk sport. And someone had also asked me too about unified basketball. That's a spring sport. Uh, we, we've only been able to do that once it was fantastic we would have done it last year too uh just obviously covid uh canceled that out so but just wanted to clarify if anybody was curious i did get a couple of questions so other than that uh, again i want to thank everybody for making the past few weeks as successful as i believe they were i want to thank all of our parents too in particular at some of our elementary schools the uh um <laughs> traffic patterns are interesting just trying to because a lot of people are driving the kids to school so uh, parents have been fantastic. We've had some help from the West Seneca Police. They've been great too in helping us to, you know, make sure the parking lot stays safe. So I just want to thank everybody for working together on that. So that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, for the board, a couple of dates: January 30th um, from 8 o'clock to 11:30. And I think they're doing this virtually. There's advocacy training that is to um, get people ready to meet with legislators. Um, to um, advocate for more financing or more equitable financing throughout the state. 
So, um, so they're going to show you, you know, how you contact the legislators and, and things like that. I know um, Mrs. Delbo has been involved with the, the legislators information. And then February 1st to the 5th, that's when um, appointments are going to be made up for the local advocacy. Um, in the past, they've gone to Albany for that, but um, that can't happen. So, um, so we're going to, it's just going to be with local administrate uh, with local legislators and then February 5th Rick Timms is going to give updates as to what's going on in the um, you know in the the finances and um, the laws that that are coming up so uh, Mrs. Delbo do you have anything to say about the legislative meetings? I do uh, February 5th uh, th that week uh, we are going to set up appointments. I'm setting up with uh, uh, Burke and with Calvin, and anyone, they're going to be Zoom, you know, uh, virtual. <laughs> but if anyone wants to join, it, let me know, and I'll let you know uh, the specific time and how to get into the, uh, to the meeting. But this is our, our big week to do it because uh, they'll be arguing in, on the Hill in uh, Albany, and we sure want to get our voices heard for a lot of reasons. Okay. Okay, and thank you for attending that. Okay, um, can I have a motion to accept 2A and 3A? 2A is, I know the marching band had, had practiced um, in the fall, but we didn't, uh, we never appointed the, um, the different uh, advisors for that. So we're doing that tonight. And also for the school resource officers, um, as a piece of trying to be fiscally responsible, we are not going to have five for the remainder of the year. We're only going to have three, one at the high school, or one at each of the high schools, and then one that floats between the middle and the elementary buildings. So um, I need a motion to accept those two. Diane, before we go anywhere with this, uh, I was looking through this and I see that uh, this is supposed to take effect January. Have we've already started? Have they already started in the buildings now? Yes, they're they're already here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So they were here for the month of January. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's it. Thank but, you. And this is only to the end of June, and then we're going to re -examine. Re -examine. Right. Yeah. Right. Correct. The the okay. contract was up at the end of December, and so um, we decided that you know, with only half the population being in the buildings, did we need five right now? Um, and so um, so it's been cut down to three. We actually pay for two and get one. Uh, free and um, and so we thought that you know that we could um, do with that okay until right. until this contract goes until the end of January or the end of June okay. and then we renegotiate for um, okay after that and with that if we're going to review it in June I will move on both okay uh, mrs. Bussey can I have a second I'll I'll second. second okay mr. Seabird and any discussion we're okay. Go back to what we all just said. That was our discussion. Yeah, it was our discussion. I yeah, guess I'm, we I'm, only, we... I'm only voting for it too if we're going to look at it again. Well, yes. um, yeah, I, I believe that. the resource officers are vital, and I would hire ten if we could. So. Um, and and you're going to pay for the extra ones? You know or? what? I'll okay. give me my checkbook. <laughs> but I do appreciate the district being fiscally responsible. But I do, you know, I do like to look at it again in June. Yes. Yes. Um, this. Yeah. This contract only goes till. June 30th. I do, I do, and I think we all agree those guys are, you know, and if we had, those people are amazing in our school, so. They're very um, vital. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I really, I appreciate both sides of it. Okay, yes, definitely. definitely. And uh, the last thing I was gonna ask you, I thought we, this was part of the clubs. We approved it. Um, is that where I was? I confused on that. No. Well, you know what? I'd, uh, I think maybe maybe uh, we all were a little bit, but I think we had so much conversation just trying to figure out the fall. Uh, but they never actually made it to the yeah. agenda, so this was not as a part of that. Okay. So yeah. yeah. Okay. But I, I mean, I, I I guess I because they were practicing and correct. Right. I remember when right. we approved clubs. I thought that they were under that group. So it, yeah. I, I apologize. I thought no, they were no, no. approved. We, we, get, we gave so, them the go ahead to get started. Just I think the payout normally comes in January. So we're, we're a little, uh, in, I think earlier in January, I think it would have been the, the, the first meeting, I okay. think. So, and I, I, I may be wrong in that, but I think that's how it normally works. And uh, we just were using this as an opportunity to work session today, so. Oh, great, uh, yeah. okay, no, I'm happy. Yeah, Very happy yeah for that. I, I went back and looked at our different um, agendas and they weren't on, the marching band was not on with any other activity advisors. Okay. We so just, just, you know, just slipped oversight. through the cracks. Correct. We weren't ever. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yep, just yeah, an oversight. Awesome. 
Okay, any other discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, carried seven to zero. Okay, we're going to have um, our presentation. So East Middle with Dr. Sharon Logren is first up. So if you want to come up and... Ms. Bears, I think what we oh. talked about just kind of combining just so you... you there's a lot of commonalities between the buildings, so we thought okay. possibly they could all kind of tag team and sort of talk and play off one another a little bit okay. to be able to talk. Okay. I'll start off here. Uh, what changes have, have been made in the building uh, as a result of working with your counterpart on the other side of town? We work very closely together. And actually, they work closely together at the middle school, but collectively, we work very closely together. Uh, we meet in the summer. We try to make sure our practices, uh, what we're doing throughout the year is uniform so that if uh, it's a smooth transition from a kid from West Middle, Days Building to my building, West Senior. Same thing with East Middle to East Senior. Uh, be consistent with our uh, streamlined scheduling process, common consistent policies like cell phone, how are we dealing with e-cigarettes, uh, make sure that one side isn't, you know, make sure that we're doing the same thing, that we're not off balance. Uh, con and there's constant communication. On PD days we meet, uh, anytime we can meet after school, uh, Mr. Winnicky has a standing f f phone conversation every day to make sure we're, 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 we're doing, uh, we're, we're, we're in line. And another thing, and I, and I don't want to get too far off on this, that streamlining scheduling process. We, that, that's a whole five hours for you. Uh, we, we are, we, we like to say we, we are two high schools, but in terms of staff and what we offer students, we're one. Uh, what we offer on both sides of town is in line. And if there is a course that does run on one side for efficiency reasons, then we make sure that a student can come over to west or a student can go over to east to make sure that we, we, uh, we offer that. So what I mean by, by that is, are we gonna run, say, an AP chemistry with three kids on one side and 12 kids on the other, run two classes, or just one side of town runs a class of 15? And then we can free up that, uh, the, the other side of town for another elective. So that's what I mean by efficiency on that, okay? So we, we've really, I've seen this come so far because I've been here for so long and I know Jay you were here a year longer than me we used to operate in silos and the high schools came together and the middle schools and now we operate from a secondary standpoint it's it, what that does for you uh, fiscally we are extremely efficient with our staffing it also offers we we're, we're able to offer more things to our students uh, we share staff with the middle school so that we can offer. I, we have a teacher that travels from Sharon's East Middle so they can, she can come up to West Senior and teach CFM. So our students benefit from that traveling. If we weren't doing that, that's a whole 60 kids that don't have that opportunity. Uh, and, and the same thing goes on in music. And, and, and again, this is a five hour conversation. I'm trying to keep it short. I'm going to turn it over to Sharon. Mr. Brinker, before you jump on from that, I just, I, if I could, uh, Mr. Brinker and Mr. Winicki, and the, their, their folks over there at each high school spent a lot of time this year pulling together what courses and like where the course numbers are at from the both. I'm going to send you that. It's a, it's a uh, spreadsheet that I'm going to send you. Uh, that's, the, that's some of the five hours that's involved in that. Now, it reflects this year. It doesn't have next year's course requests because we're still going to start that process. But just to give you kind of a snapshot of some of the information and some of the collaboration takes place. So I will send that along just so that you have that information to be able to review and discuss. But it'll be good for just when you're looking at next year. At the high school level, there's a lot more electives and, you know, classes, a variation in classes than there would be in the middle of the elementary schools where kind of there's a lot of, you know, everybody has to take certain classes. So, but this will be helpful for you so you'll be able to see how many kids at West Senior are taking, you know, French 4 and how many kids over at East Senior are taking, you know, whatever, you know, a tech class or something like that. So I'll send that to you. And that's a long process. Uh, question eight is a good one for you. When Jay and I will talk about that scheduling. The, the scheduling season never ends. It, it start, we started it in, in August. We streamlined it. We've been working on it uh, September, October. Uh, and then the kids start to, to pick their classes soon. Uh, the curriculum guide is done. But that's, 
your question eight, we have more to say later. I'm going to turn it over to Sharon. And okay. So the next question that you had asked of us was what needs does your building have that requires district intervention? So as you can see, we listed a number of areas that um, we collectively felt as the four secondary buildings were commonalities that were areas that we need some attention. One of them to start was the tech ed department, the shop equipment replaced. Some of that is quite old in all the buildings. Um, and again, we understand the fiscal times we're in, but since you asked these questions, we did list it with the understanding that we are facing those times, so please know that we do realize that. Um, some kitchen equipment um, to be replaced. I know some has been done over time. I know Mr. Bedient, <laughs> you visited my building many times, and we finally got that dishwasher fixed. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> so, yeah, I know that was a thorn in the side for a long time, so thank you, but that that was for me, our other buildings still need theirs replaced and just fixed. Um, some storage for athletic equipment associated with the new field track, East Senior and probably at West Senior. Um, maintenance of buildings and grounds, we know that um, staffing for them has also been tight over the years, but that's an area that we could really use some help with, um, like especially the sidewalks, et cetera. They do a really good job, our own internal uh, staff does a really great job, especially now when uh, the inclement we weather begins to arrive and making sure that the sidewalks are really taken care of and safe now that students are back in and salted and then reshoveled during the day when the snow comes back down so we can get dismissal done. Um, uh, some of the pool areas, I think this was Jay's, looks like the 1949 pictures when West opened, that was yours. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the, his, his could use a little help. Um, so a lot of our facades need improvement. Um, parking lots need reconfiguration and updates. Uh, concrete around the building has many cracks. Uh, for some of our buildings that have yet to uh, begin our capital improvement projects, some of that will be addressed at that time. But in the meantime, until that happens, or especially if that gets pushed off, there are some areas that are crumbling a little bit that will need to be addressed and fixed, especially for um, those that, uh, areas that are near some handicapped um, entrances. Um, plumage and, uh, plumbing and drainage, indoor and outdoor, et cetera. Again, that's another thing that um, hopefully will be addressed for many of us with the capital improvement projects because we have um, many buildings that need some help in those areas that things are backing up and or the ceilings are uh, really leaking all over the place. And they are quite old, but we know, again, we're on the docket for that. Um, in my building specifically, our auditorium has not been updated in quite a long time. I see Mrs. Pesha shaking her head, nodding yes, uh, as she's a heavily involved parent in Drama Club. And we have done a lot of fundraising on our side of town with the uh, PTO and with just in our building and our teachers to raise money to fund things ourselves. And we've done a great job at that uh, in lieu of having other available funds. Um, but again, it, similar to uh, Jay's pool, that would probably be my auditorium. My, my gymnasium is on the capital improvement project because otherwise we would have listed ours. And I know Mr. Keene has a lot of other um, points in his building as well. Is there anything else you want to add for your building on that list? I think we kind of covered those. The auditorium, um, we replaced the light bulbs um, probably about eight months ago. And obviously they haven't been used to its fullest extent over the course of the last 10 months. And uh, half of them are burning out because it's not the light bulb, it's the actual yeah, well, 1960 yeah. socket that's, that's um, causing a problem. So there's a lot of issues mm -hmm. along, just things like that, simple things mm -hmm. like that, well, not so simple things. But um, yeah, but I, I, I echo what Sharon and, and Jay both said. Those, those light bulbs, aren't, they're not cheap. No, no, they're not. So is there, I mean, obviously the replacement of the light bulbs, again, if they're burning out, I mean, is that, is that something that is easily addressed or is it not easily addressed fixing the lighting itself? I don't think that would fall under a capital improvement, would it? Well, the light fixtures could, not, not the bulbs. In an, in an auditorium? Know. Yeah, yeah okay. you could. It's just a matter of once you get in there and you start messing around, oh. then you gotta, it's gotta be Understood, right. yeah. And from yeah, what I gathered, it's, it's the actual load that the auditorium itself can handle. Yeah. And with the, you know, even though with the yeah. high efficiency bulbs and, and um, sockets, things like that, it's still a pretty old system 
within the auditor within both auditoriums. Right. So correct. Um, that's where the hang up is. Okay. Moving on to uh, number three, what, what difficulties does your building face with the, um, uh, that the board should be aware of? Um, recruiting and retaining substitute teachers. Uh, I think that's for everybody, that's a, a daily, daily battle. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the positives I guess we can put on this is a lot of student teachers started over the last few weeks. So it's, it feels good to have some young, energetic student teachers in the building. So hopefully we can retain them. And hey, we got you know, plenty of sub opportunities for you guys. So, um, it was good to see them in the building this week, starting this week. Um, a lack of an alternative school, I think that was a, a, a high school, do you want to? Yeah, we, uh, th that's mainly my, my, my bullet right there, a lack of an alternative school. West Senior does use the EDGE program, it's very good, uh, but sometimes we just don't have enough spots at the EDGE program. And it's awfully, yeah, it's very expensive. Uh, I will say, you know, kudos to you, uh, Jan, I'm speaking for Jay Winnicki too. The opening of the BOCI spots last year is great. Let's see where that goes. Uh, that's gonna help out a, a lot. You know, limiting it to 56 kids, and now I think we have about 100 and 10. Yeah, yes. So kudos to you. You know, I, it, I don't want you to sit here and, and think we came here and said, these are all the problems. No, there's some great stuff. You're a very supportive board for the kids, for the programs of the school. That's one of them. Uh, and and you know, I talked to Ms. Dr. Cervoni, Mr. Bystrak. You know, we're, we're trying to figure out at West what, what kind of alternative school or what kind of alternative program do we need. We've looked at some. Some don't fit. Uh, but that, I think these BOCI spots, let's see what happens. How many spots do we have at the EDGE program? I, I, could you could you explain exactly what the edge oh, program is? Yes, oh, it's it's a program, BOCES program, over in Chictawaga. It's an alternative school. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a wonderful program. Uh, we we just sent another student there uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's it's just a very nice program where students have a lot of mental, uh, social, emotional help, assistance, a lot of. A lot of structure for the students. And it's different structure too. So oh my gosh. It's, yeah, I've toured the program. Yep. And it's a wonderful program. And we had the opportunity, the, the BOCES board had the opportunity to sit down with the students and the staff, and it was wonderful. Um, I was just wondering, I know it's you know limited to so many slots, obviously, because they only have so many spots. But I also, like East program that you have, and it's, um, that we couldn't have balance on both yeah. sides, but right. at least you have the opportunity to use the edge. This is a, it's a very, and, and our students Good last year yes. were very successful. Yes, uh, they, you, you met them, you, they, they graduated. Mm -hmm. It's a very, mm -hmm. they do well there. They, they, do, they do well there. We have the ALC at East Senior. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that just for East Senior students? It is. Yeah, okay, why don't we have one at West Senior? It, it, it can, when just, the ALC you know, collapsed, the staff went to East, mm -hmm. okay. and it, we, we never had. Primarily, um, for those of you who have you know, been involved, do you remember Mary Lynn Ranger? Well, she was a special ed teacher at the ALC. And she took one of her, tra her transfer was to East. And she came in, and Dr. Cervoni and I were there. Says, and this is the way I envision it. This is how it's going to work. And she just had this master plan. We met uh, Charles Lehman, I think, was still mm -hmm. here at the time. And his wife, Maggie, was uh, ran like an in-house ALC at Sweet Home. So we spent time meeting with her and her administration and said, okay, well, what does this look like? And Mary, Mary Lynn just offered this range of flexibility in what she did and what she was willing to do and essentially serving as like a mother for these kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you she know, does a great job. I'm having a rough time with, okay, well, come on, we're taking a walk. Mm -hmm. Just complete, so essentially taking the things she learned over at the old ALC building in Ebenezer and put it inside of an existing high school. And the first couple of years, it was, you know, it was tough. It was still trying to 
you know, well, why do they get to do this? And we don't get, and we've worked through this now, and now we have a wait list to get into the program. Parents call us, <laughs> can my kid get in there? My older son was in there. They try pulling like legacy things. It's kind of <laughs> cool, you know, because they know their kids are graduating because there's a little bit more flexibility um, with those, which is why when you see your uh, class spreadsheets, when they, when Dr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bushwick gives them to you, you'll see a class of global class, let's say global ALC three. That's why there's three kids in there, because it's only those three kids that need it from that program. And that comes at a cost of sometimes bigger class sizes for other kids, but those kids will graduate, and we know that. Whereas when we had them in a class of 25 or 26, they were like fish out of water in some cases. It was also a space issue. You had the space for us to move the uh, yeah. Yeah. ALC yeah. over there. Yeah. And it was sad because so that was So we were able to go into program. an old business classroom yeah. and kind of you know, mm -hmm. do some in-house renovations yeah. to it. Um, and then even when we looked at this capital project with the renovation of the science rooms, which will take over the space they're using, mm -hmm. the first question we thought of was, okay, well, where are they going to go? They're going to go in this other space here that we have. Yeah. So that's, it's just that much of a priority. Mm -hmm. And we have that space. And thank God we do, because if we didn't have the physical space, you have all the willingness in the world, you don't have a spot mm -hmm. to put it. So, so if we have this viable program at East, what is preventing us to have it at West if there's a need for it, I guess? Staffing. Mm -hmm. Staffing. And Staffing. Space and, and in space. We yeah. keep assessing what's the best program for West. Mm -hmm. Right now we have the EDGE program. It is a staffing issue. Uh, right now I'm not sure if, it, I'm not sure if we have an, a terrible need with you opening up the BOCES program. That's going to help a lot the, of students. The other side of it, Jay, if I could just jump into, because we've had some conversation about this over the years. We've also expanded some of our uh, special education programming at the high school level, too, which actually is housed over at West Senior, too, which in some cases accounts for some students that might have some more unique learning profiles or some more some more <laughs> unique needs. Combination of that along with you know additional access to you know, in some cases it's just a, it's an interest issue. So you've got more kids. You know Jay's not being uh, uh, disingenuous when he says the the additional BOCES slots really make a difference. Right. These are some kids that just they, really have a, just a, a it's not I won't even call it a non traditional learning style. They just their interests lie in something more hands on or somewhere else. So right. I think that's been a benefit as well. We're so and we're going to continue. Right. Yeah, we, 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 yeah, that's, that's true. So guys, when, when we hear this talking about, you were speaking that um, there's a waiting list and uh, our success rate is so well with these kids, students going two, three, four through and graduating. What do we need to do to, to that there is no waiting list? If that's identified on the east side right. and the west side is being kind of uh, more into the manufacturing and the BOCES and that programs, we're offering the BOCES on the east side too. But what's stopping us, or what do we need to really do? I, no child should be left right. you know, out of waiting list. Yeah, I would say in general, when we have a kid on a, on a list, like they may come to us in freshman year. And we generally try to wait until they're sophomore before making a change of program. Let's give a full year. And a five at their freshman level? Or when they we start, when we meet as a child study team, we meet every Monday, um, like clockwork. And as we talk about kids, once we start getting into, even as a freshman, maybe potentially October, November, December, we start going, let's keep this kid on the radar. Okay, this might be an ALC kid or a kid who needs to, you know, go into that program. Uh, we look at, you know, sometimes we'll get phone calls from parents. You know, this isn't working for my kiddo. Can we think about this? And we always, we generally, have, I don't, can't think of one freshman that we've ever put into the program during their freshman year. But when we hit about May, we start looking. Now, when we have older kids, it might be, okay, we've got six spots and we have eight kids that need to go in, and then we try to prioritize the kids. Well, who, where are we with credits? Where are we with this? Can we do this? What if we put him in this section? And then sometimes uh, we've got uh, Mrs. Dorado who took over after Mrs. Ranger passed. Mrs. Dorado will come and she'll go, well, if, just, just give them to me. Just, give them. I'll go to the 18. I'll go to 19. And sometimes you have to. And can you, are you sure you're okay? Because that's a lot of kids. Because they're coming in and out, and at any one time, are all 19 kids in the room? Probably not. But there's six here. Then there's seven. Then there's 12. And then there's three. And you know, she has a great aide in that room who's also just a super tech wizard and can help kids there. So, um, and I say waitlist. It's not like it's a doubled in size. 
there's usually three to four kids and everybody who gets on that wait list will generally get in and we get them through. Um, I don't know that it's something like, would we double the size of the program if you hired you know, another aide and another teacher? I don't know one that you'd have the physical space to do it. Just to be, you know, if we're talking, you know, as far as a building type of resource, but also, I don't know that that need would always exist. Well, it's easier, the wait to, list but it's easier to collapse when it's getting smaller. But when when they're banging on the doors to get in, I think when right. we sat at graduation and we see them special, you know, the students that have really uh, accelerated, yeah. bought into the program, and they're at the graduation. You yeah, know, for that sure. is something that before they would have fallen through the cracks. Right. You know what I mean? And, and a lot of it's encouraging, and a lot of it is staying on them, holding them accountable. I've seen what Ann's done with that program. Yeah. And for us to leave someone on the outside, and I know we're not doing it on purpose, and it goes yeah. by need, but I think as we sit here as Board of Education, we, them, every child, I mean, we got to oh, find sure. a way at some point. I mean, way, and we're going to talk is, at other points yeah. that we have all recognized the fiscal world we live in. You know, and you say, what could we do? I mean, we could always give you a list. Um, no, know. but an aide or a teacher at this point, I think, is an easy fix from where, you know. Well, I, and, and I don't think, just to be frank, none of us are ever saying no. <laughs> well, this is right? the only way, but this is the first time we're hearing about yeah. this. But this, I mean, to get, you know, additional students into a program or offer even as we'll get down into a couple of the other ones and we can probably even let's click on the next slide. I don't know if the next one's yeah, I just want to add one thing to yeah. That. So oh. and again to Jay's point, thank you very much for opening up additional positions because or spots in the program because for us in the middle schools mm -hmm. we are having those conversations with our children already. So as we're planning for their career and their goals and what they want to do in high school, a lot of our students do voice that they do want to go into a particular program. But there's all, there have been limited spots for so many years. So we tell them, you know, you, you have to wait. You can't go in as a freshman, but we do pass on our counselors, work with their counselors, mm -hmm. and we do identify our children who are already interested in the programs and knowing that they then will assess the need and if there is still an interest as they come up and meet weekly, just like uh, David, I meet with our staff and our students and our counselors. All so. right. There's, a, there's another group that is very needy, and are you able to still maintain the advanced placement? classes that you have had and yes. do you have yes. good interest in that and do we have kids that are really even graduating early I'm just interested in that yes yes we okay. have, mm -hmm. I would say every year there's a few I don't know how many at West senior but we probably have I would say sometimes it's one sometimes it's three January grads every year so they are um, having those uh, what about our, our university uh, our AP numbers, we've got, you know, between our AP classes, our Syracuse University classes, and now we have a good new partnership with Hilbert as well, right. which we're actually looking to expand into social studies for AP world history. Good. Um, because those are guaranteed transcripted credits for the kids. Mm -hmm. They earn the college course, then they leave, you know, and if we, now the Hilbert partnership doesn't even cost us anything except for the students having to pay for the credit hours. And I think Hilbert is, the 300 and some dollars for the course, which in today's day and age of higher education, that's nothing. I mean, I don't, it's, and they do offer financial aid for our families in need as well. Mm -hmm. But we could have kids leaving our campuses with 15 to 18 credits in college, which is over a semester. Now that, I mean, that's, that's an incentive for, I think, for kids to take the class. And whether that's with forensics, world history. Hilbert's program is rapidly growing. We do it also with Spanish five and French five. Good. So even if they just took those three courses, the kids have three courses in college done for less than the price of one credit hour. How many of your kids, uh, you probably don't know offhand though, uh, what's your enrollment in AP classes? In AP? Mm -hmm. it, uh, AP we did, we're obviously different than our dual enrollment courses. Uh, and it ranges from, I think I've got, in our building, 63 kids taking AP government right now, okay. 20 kids in AP calculus. Okay. But we have a Niagara University partnership for statistics. Mm -hmm. And that's got, I think, two sections this year, if I'm yes. remembering correctly. Every number, Mr. Baxter going to give you a that. Yeah, so you'll see all of these. Yeah. And the yeah. chemistry numbers are interesting because we both have it this year, but we changed the way we're uh, with the prerequisite to get into AP chemistry. We always used to use it as just, uh, I'm a student, I took biology, I took earth science, I wanna take AP chemistry. Mm -hmm. 
The college board recommends you take Regents Chemistry first so you have a baseline of knowledge. So last year our numbers went real low because we said you have to have it. So we didn't have a lot. This year we're up a little bit, but now we're slowly rebuilding that program because the kids' results will be better because they'll have that foundational knowledge going into the AP course. There's other avenues. It's not just AP. Our right. SUPA, that's Syracuse University, those yep. courses. That's psychology and sociology. Good. Great. So there's, yeah, there's a really a great deal of opportunities. And with Hilbert, we could even offer, or any of the other colleges and universities, additional opportunities. I know through CTE and Mr. Merk Dr. Merkel could tell you a lot more, partnerships with Bryant and Stratton to give kids exposure to different courses as well. And I don't want to speak for him, but I'm pretty sure those are free of charge. They are. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Merkel. And we have college courses in every core area. Mm -hmm. and, and our well, teachers teach those? Correct. And they're trained by the colleges? Or yes. Trained by, okay. Either AP or actual college, Syracuse, Niagara, right. and Stratton, Erie, Erie Community College. In every core area we have over we have and correct me, they're considered adjunct professors, considered correct adjunct. me, yes. right. Correct. Elective areas as well, which you'll hear about. Right, them. yeah, so Dr. Merkel will give you the whole rundown yeah, for... Steal your <laughs> <laughs> uh, you knew, do we do any yeah. kind of, um, I don't want to say, I guess follow-up with the, current, the kids who have gone through these, and taken these classes and gone to college? Do we have continuous feedback from them? Was, were they helpful, not helpful? Like, are we, you know, I mean, because there's a lot of money invested in that type of program. Right. Are we getting feedback after the kids graduate in any way? Are there, you know, Mr. Merkel, or, or is there any kind of communication with these Well, kids? I know student services does reach out to graduates, but you're dependent on if they respond to you. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know that they get a ton of response, but I know they do reach out to everybody based on the contact information they have. Okay. So... Um, that's definitely something I personally am working on with the board. Right. Is finding a way to communicate because, you know, I want to. If my son's taking these classes, I, I don't know which ones he's taking, like specifically, but I know I just had to pay money for something. <laughs> Most of the classes, <laughs> I'm definitely going to let you know in right. five years or six years whether it was worth it or not. And I was just curious if we get any feedback right. or. Because, like, that NU program we just started, what was it, a year and a half, two years ago? Right. That seems amazing. I mean, I really thought that was great the way we were doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just curious. I know we, you know, we find which ones work, but I definitely something I want to work on is getting the kids to better give us feedback in the future. Right. I think our graduates, I don't want to say owe it to us, but I think they would appreciate being able to help future generations by getting us this information. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I was just curious if we did anything now that you had any feedback on whether... Yeah, I don't have it personally, but I could, we talk to our student services to see what they're hearing back okay. from kids, cool. for sure. But I remember when you presented on that NU program, how it, it was a different type of credit, or they didn't have to get a uh, Right. They don't have to get a certain score in the exam. Yes. It's a, called a transcripted credit. Transcripted so credit. when you go to UB, you just call Niagara, you have your transcript sent to UB or whatever other college, there's your... They have three credits, whether it's they give you credit for the actual course or an elective, it's still saving you money. Yeah. Um, and initially, we actually tried to go back to Niagara with our forensics, but they, weren't, they didn't want to expand their program yet. Okay. And so we had gotten an email six months prior from Hilbert, and we said, well, let's reach out to them. And I think uh, Janelle was over at your office inside of a week. Um, and she said, here's the list of all of them we can do for you. Oh, so, and then um, Mr. Dalbo mm -hmm. was working with our AP World History teachers, and uh, we're looking at that now for AP World as well as an option because they can actually do both simultaneously, awesome. which is pretty cool. I was invited to do some seminars for Canisius College and also City of Buffalo teachers and so forth, and I always started with the fact that any student who is on either end of the spectrum in their needs is special education and that's why I, I really am interested that we keep those special opportunities for both you know ah, couldn't agree spectrum. more yeah no, yeah Ms. Ms. Dabble, and I'm, I'm going to be loose with this but in my recollection I, I still have a pretty good recollection uh, even when we were cutting staff five years ago when we had big budget crises and even when staff were, were separated from the district I don't believe Dr. Sirhoi nor I cut one AP class. We're always able to keep those going. 
Yeah. In fact, we and then since we've we've That's expanded right. it with Supa. It's just to meet every kid's need. Yeah, is where absolutely. We're at. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. When I get, I remember one dad, Mr. Meany, called me up and. I, I, I took the credit, but I didn't. I don't deserve the credit. But he, kept, text. he kept saying, "Mr. Brinker, I my kid went to Fredonia. They graduated a, a uh, half a year, and he just kept saying how much money he saved uh, his, with books, driving to school, uh, tuition, just compounding. It. And then the fact that his son got a job half a year before everybody else, he just." Wrote me a long letter, and every time he'd come to a volleyball mm -hmm. game, he'd say, and I can't thank you enough for what my senior has done. That's the type of feedback, too, that would be yeah. great to right. share with mm -hmm. middle school kids. They look out, work for these classes. Right. So, yeah, that's, that's the type of stuff I hope we can get more of. So, um, question four you guys asked us in the last three years, just some things that um, strides we've made to enhance the educational experience for our students. And, you know, I know... Well, for us, we've added AIS and science. Uh, a couple summers ago, we did a hiring. Uh, I think my three colleagues um, all needed uh, support in student services. And I said to Dr. Schmore, I said, I could use a science teacher because labs are an issue for our kids. Uh, they fall behind on labs. They can't take the exam. Then we have a, you know, they fall behind. So we've added AIS and science. Um, yet last year was the first year. So our data on that is kind of, well, Partial, I guess, at this point because of the pandemic, but it uh, seems to be working out quite well. Um, through International Club and then later on through Rho Kappa, is just expanding um, the recognition and education of the different cultures that now exist on the east side of town. We are approximately 88% uh, Caucasian and 12% minority right now. Um, if I look at uh, Dr. Logren's numbers and see where we will be in four years, we'll be about 82% Caucasian and 18% minority. So that's become a, a push. And the kids bring it to us. We had a student uh, last year. She was, a, um, I'm sorry, two years ago. She was a senior. And she said, you guys really try hard in Black History Month. Can I help you, please? <laughs> she goes, you're just, you're... I know you guys, you're mean well, but you're kind of missing the point. And I go, have at it. So this was in December, so we had several months. She goes, well, I'd like to bring in an African-American dance troupe for after school and do a, you know, a poetry slam and the whole thing. And she planned the entire thing. She goes, do I have a budget, by the way? I said, a little bit. I can get you some money. And it was fantastic. So it was totally student-driven, just like a lot of our Culture Week opportunities or our Social Studies Honor Society um, making special announcements during times to make sure we're trying to keep everyone educated about why we do certain things as a country and as a, an American people. Uh, so I think that helps a lot because it's recognizing all of the different uh, kids that are in our building and kind of the melting pot that, um, you know, that we are. Um, we've been real active using our social media because people are communicating differently now um, it's not just email and phone calls, but putting things out on Twitter and on Facebook whenever we've got, whether it's important events coming up or uh, celebratory messages because our kids are doing great things or anything like that, just to get the message out to more people um, that we can, that's great. Uh, and then a monthly newsletter as well because you know, making the educational experience better for students means also that they're not missing opportunities because, I mean, I got a 16-year-old at home. What'd you do? Oh. But if I can find out what he did in school or what I need to know as a parent, that's certainly helpful. So those newsletters, whether it's uh, upcoming um, prep programs or community ed or academy nights, so if parents can know about those things that we can communicate it directly to them, also very beneficial, I think, to the kids. So that's just a little bit from East. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll try to move quickly. We went from four open elective offerings to well over 20. That was a need I came to doc, or, uh, Mr. Byster a couple years, actually three years ago. And just getting more offerings. You hired uh, three art, tech, and business. Thank you. Just with uh, equalizing scheduling, West Senior gained about 4.5. Uh, that's from moving teachers from the middle school from E senior, moving them back and forth, PE, math. That's all efficiency. That's all efficiency, maximizing the teaching load. So uh, that was a need that I saw. 
that we needed to make sure that both sides of town offered a similar educational program. So the last three years we've added 7.5 that translates to many, many more electives. So I want to see with the BOCES, with the more electives, let's see where we are in three to four or five years. Let's keep assessing. So that kind of answers your question about b before about the, uh, the ALC program. Our primary focus uh, is, is to build po positive relationships. Every student that walks in that door, you know, it, the military does this, the Marines, you know, an officer, you know, the, the big tough Marines, an officer says, let's build a relationship with that that new recruit, that new soldier. If it's good for the military, it's definitely good for a 14, 15 year old student walking into West Senior. So this has really been our focus, is to build these positive, good relationships. You've outfitted the buildings with electives, with academies, with BOCES. You, you've done a phenomenal job. Uh, wh how do we see this? What's, what, what have we seen in the last three years? Extracurricular, participate, particip participate, it's hard to talk with a mask on. <laughs> Kids come to a lot more stuff. How about that? Uh, the last two years, homecoming dances, when I took over, we were getting, getting rid of homecoming. It, the one year we had to cancel it, it rained. It was like, ah, kids aren't really coming to dances. The last two years, not this past year, but the two before that, we had 800 kids. We we're like, holy cow, we've never had 800 kids. Not one issue. Two years ago, 800 plus. We outdid it. We had one issue, some kid from a private school came and wanted to start a fight. Officer French and I dealt with it. But eight, over 800 kids and the private school kid is the one that we had to call his dad, get over here, take your kid home. There's no issues, there's no issues. And the other thing that I'm very proud of uh, is the Vader. We've dived from 7.2 to uh, just below one. So I'm very proud of that. So what does that tell me? Kids want to come to school. They're proud of it. That's why we focused on the concrete, because we know if the, if, if the kids feel proud, the building they walk in, they see the W or the East, they see the blue or the green, we know if they're proud, they want to come to school. And you've done a great job. I know. They don't know what Vader is. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you that in a second. Um, you've done a great job. And, and, that, and I want to thank you for all of the electives, the BOCES, everything. Uh, even when, when Mr. Winnicky and I said, hey, can you, uh, come, on, can you come over and uh, give, us, give us those extracurricular activities? You did. So we've been running the clubs and the activities. Thank you for that. It just gets kids interested. We said three years ago, I said we needed more electives. You hired more teachers. So thank, thank you. Uh, but those are some of the numbers. Vader uh, fights disruptive. violence, disruptive yeah. behaviors, fights alcohol, Stuff like that, stuff that you don't want in your school. So is, is that a system for tracking it? Yes. Or is that just a yes. We, we, we report it every year. Okay. okay. Generally speaking, it's, you know, the experts in education say five, six. You know, we were at seven, and every year we, were, we just focused on that. What can we do to the soft things we can do to make a kid feel great when they come to West Senior? Is it a sign? Is it a program? Is it a welcome? Is it a... Uh, AIS program with Pat Braunscheidel, what is it? And the whole staff is bought into this. Kids want to come to school. They want to come to school. We saw the graduation rates today, over 90%. Right. Yes. And they're going to get better. Yeah, Think of what good. we've done in the English program, yeah. in the math program, you know, and Ms. Persico with her focus on attendance, you know, getting kids to the, come to school. Both mm -hmm. sides of town. The BOCES programs, these are things that, mm -hmm. you know, you've added, a, you've done a lot in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. We'll see it. We'll see it. I guarantee it. To answer your question. Yeah, and, and that's, that starts at the middle school level. Um, when kids come from Winchester, West Dell, and Allendale, and they come into our building, they see um, all over our building, we are West. He's going to try to steal that for the high school, but um, we start building that mentality. We start building that that idea of this is this is our school, and the, the, the communication piece is huge with our families, with our students, um, with our staff. Whether like like Ms. Winnicky said, whether it's uh, weekly staff updates or monthly monthly newsletters, uh, just save the date things, um, all important, just to make our families, make our students feel part of that West Middle community. Um, some of the favorite things that I, I enjoy right away listed is my, uh, you know, every year we have our West Fest. 
we have five, 600 people show up on, on the first week of school or the first couple of weeks of school. All it is is a couple yard games out front, some food, popcorn, but it's a good time. People are just hanging out. Um, we have our band, we have kids playing uh, music, live music, and there's just, it's just a good atmosphere, kind of like a middle school version of homecoming. And having seen so many people there, five, six, like I said, five, 600 people, um, really demonstrates the start to school year off right, and uh, it's gonna be a good one. But we, we really start that, that West mentality early, right in sixth grade, because like, like I said, they're coming from all different schools, um, and we're bringing them all together, and we just wanna make sure that we're all together, we're, we're in this together, and uh, for the next seven years, we're gonna be together, so uh, we started early. And I would echo everything that my colleague said over here. We, we, we very much operate very much the same way, building relationships, being visible. Um, we, our side of town is a little different. In addition to all the family nights and the welcoming and doing things for families, we very, very much have a culture of this is one big family. This is our East Middle community. You, same thing. You are going to be together for a long time, just like in your family. You're going to have days where you're going to be on each other's nerves, but at the end of the day, we all take care of, of one another, and that's the, the message that we send. Uh, we also have e &L family nights on our side of town. Um, and, I mean, for another example of just welcoming kids, especially now welcoming them back to school, just making them feel comfortable and getting them back into the routine has been really, really important. Uh, we have everybody out greeting them every day, making sure that they're comfortable, they're safe. Uh, they still know that they can come down, and it's business as not usual, but everything's still available, it just looks a little different. And um, I mean, for another example, um, my one music teacher, Mary Palmer, she's awesome. She's out playing the guitar every morning in the front foyer for them when they come in. And so it's really a nice thing, and I always tell her, uh, you know, how much I just love that in the morning, and the students love it too. And, it, just from that to down to making sure every kid right now is coming in and offered a breakfast and it's available in the front foyer. It's the first thing they see. Are you hungry? Do you, do you have you eaten yet today? And just making sure that the second they are off the bus that they are taken care of in the building. So for everybody watching, please know that, that all of your children and all of our buildings are doing quite well right now, returning to school and are taken care of all day long. So. But, the, but that definitely pays off in the long run. If I see Mr. Siebert every single day and I, I stop just to say hi for a second or, hey, uh, talk about the bills lost, so whatever the case may be, um, I'll be had to go there. Had to go. Wow. Yeah. Like, like we've been watching Larry Carroll. Salt on a wound, Dave. <laughs> but, uh, you know, all of a sudden, if he starts slipping in math a little bit, we can still have that conversation. And, and if he's comfortable, he's, he, you know, and, oh, what's going on in math? Well, maybe I need a little bit more support. Let's go. We can go down right after school today and, and take care of that. So building that relationship. Um, just talk about the small things at, at first can really um, you know, develop that trust and understanding with each other and um, really help out academically down the road. So it's, it's definitely worth taking that time. I, mean, I think we all enjoy doing that. Okay, we talked um, when you were asking what would we need. Again, recognizing the financial situation that you know the entire nation is in, especially New York State, you know, and. Uh, all of that. Um, what could we do, I mean, to increase student achievement? Um, AIS in all four core subject areas certainly would be, uh, you know, that would be a game changer for sure. Um, an academic learning lab, this is something, you know, um, we've talked about at length, but then it, it comes at a, a big human resources cost for sure. Staffed by teachers that can help kids um, you know, not a study hall, someplace they can go to get help on a lab, an assignment, a project, uh, some homework or something like that. You know, I got, can you proofread my paper for me? Um, because that would just be helpful before I turn it in. Anything like that would be, you know, fantastic. And it's, you know, yes, a dream, but, you know. Can, can you, since you both have it, can you expand on, build, build your perfect lab? Who's, who's there? What teachers are there? What staff are there? You have, you know, maybe a... <laughs> well, you, you, you could, you know, you'd want some, at least somebody who, you have to have that compassionate person who's understanding, like, they're just there to help. But you want somebody who's, you know, probably several folks, um, and it wouldn't be, it could be a full-time person. I know Hamburg High School in the late 90s had a full-time person who ran it. Um, but it could be teachers rotating in and out um, as an assignment. 
you know, math teacher, science teacher, English, and you know, social studies that they could help. And if I had study hall block three odd, I know I can go up there and I'm gonna find a social studies teacher or an English teacher who can help me with my paper. Or a math teacher who can explain that equation that I'm just not getting right now. Um, I think that would be, that's an ideal. You know, and certainly pie in the sky for sure. Um, improving and revising course offerings to keep all of our curriculum relevant and interesting to the student population. Um, and by that I mean just taking a look at our kids in the 21st century, in 2021, what are they into, what can, kind of piggybacks on number seven that you guys asked about, the science, tech, and math. Um, what gets their interest and hooks them? You know, there's a lot of times where we'll sit and think, oh gosh, we shouldn't have to compete with whatever. You know, it was the TV, the computer, but we do have to compete with that. You know, that's what's, that's their life now. It's not when we grew up, you know, 100 years ago, um, and you went home, and that was it. You had a television, but you didn't have online, or the phone in your pocket, or anything like that. So we've got to compete with that, and make sure we're providing high interest, relevant material to the kids. Certainly, you know, you're prescribed a lot by the state, what you have to do. Um, and we've talked with Dr. Merkel about this at length of, you know, what can we do? Because it's not an easy answer all the time. Um, of how do you hook those kids into get them taking more classes or trying something new and stepping out of their comfort zone. Um, I think that would be, you know, fantastic. Um, and then also a full-time reading specialist at uh, both high schools. We, Jay and I talk about this a lot, and we share one right now, and it's fantastic, and we're super appreciative of that. Uh, what we find in, you know, whether it's elementary, middle, or high school, and we're only talking about high school, but I'm sure they, Sharon and Dave would say the same, and every elementary person would probably need two, um, and they do a great job, but sometimes we get kids transfer in eighth, ninth grade, and we look, and there's, there's gaps there. And every test these kids have to take in Regents, whether it's math, science, social, or English, is a reading test now. If they can't read the word problems, they're gonna struggle. And that's, it's the saddest thing you see because you, they want it so bad, but how do you get it to them? And it's, it's not, don't, there's, we can tell you the list, but it's not easy to do that because you know, the budget's finite. Um, and the state aid is, it is what the governor decides it is sometimes, and it's out of your hands and our hands, and to be realistic. So we've done a good job, I think, working collaboratively as a district. We have to. I mean, the four of us sit here and we say, okay, who is our special ed staff? It's not Easts or West, it's ours. And how, where do we need the resources this year? You know, Jay talks about Sharon's staff. About four years ago, he's like, you guys need some help in social studies. Send us a half a social studies teacher. Two years after that, we didn't need that help anymore. He needed it back. So it's back at West Senior again. It's just moving back and forth. Where is the needs for our kids? So, I mean, you asked. We're re realistic with it, but, Do we know. ever ask the students what kind of courses they might want to take? Do we get feedback from them, you know, to, to see what we want to do in the future? Yeah, yeah, we did that, and we do that all the time. I know Dr. Merkel will talk uh, more about that. We, we're constantly addressing what the students interests are our English for alternatives were student driven we assess, we surveyed what students were interested in English and we developed four uh, English for alternatives f for those uh, and, and and also you know we, we talked about adding super classes you know that that's by demand mm -hmm. you know students want more we, we started with one super class Syracuse class uh, three or four now uh, same thing happened with math. You know, the, with traditionally AP calculus, now we're offering statistics. There's a, a demand for that, a pre-calc uh, and uh, statistics. So yes, so, uh, student feedback, let's run one class, let's see if there's interest. If there's interest and kids are flocking to it, or if there's no interest, then we look for other, okay. other avenues. Uh, yeah. Music one of, is... Yeah. One other question about AIS, who mans the AIS rooms right now? Right now, I have uh, Pat Bronchettel runs it. Uh, he has a, a TA up there in math. We try to get uh, as many math people as we can. And uh, being West Seneca, they usually get scooped up because this is the place that we train teachers and train TAs. Mm -hmm. And then we try to staff it with any teacher that 
has a whole that we can combine a class and get an English teacher, get a science teacher out there. So it's, it's a little bit, what, what do you have? Let's try to get a couple teachers in here. Uh, but I do have one, Mr. Braunschweiger, that, that, that runs it. Most of the time I do have to steal him for some global classes too. Now, East doesn't have that, right? Correct. Okay, so West has it, so it would be a program that hopefully we earn. We develop, and, and I, we developed that out of our AIS program years ago. Okay. I'm sorry, AIS instead of ALC. But actually, I mean, we've tried to, in the lower grades, tried, but like you said, you don't think of the students that transfer in from other areas that they might not get that extra help in our lower primary grades. So, I mean, it looks like all levels need some type of extra right. reading, math. It's all reading. Yeah. Uh, everything's reading. Do you think some of this uh, improved communication, obviously there's improved communication between East and West, uh, is some of that attributed to the curriculum cabinet? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Really, because it's a different it it's is. a different setup from years ago. You know, I've been here for, you know, everyone thinks 302 years. But uh, anyway, uh, it's, it's much more friendly and much more communicative between East and West. And I'm just wondering if some of that is a result of that structure. I, I would blame it on the cabinet. <laughs> Yeah. I would. Yeah. We, we, the, the, because you're really talking to one another a lot. We, we do nothing but talk to each other. Yeah. We used to, you know, we used to yeah, operate in silos. Mm -hmm. East right. Senior and West Senior had different That's right. educational experiences. At least and we're, we've gradually aligned them. As Mary and I say, well, we're becoming more turquoise. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. We bleed turquoise. I always say right. that. Between staff that moves and kids that move throughout the day, mm -hmm. it's... It's seamless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's seamless all and day we long. We talk about this collaboration. I, I mean, not, no exaggeration. I don't think a day goes by I don't talk to this guy. And it might be 8 o'clock at night or 8 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And we are constantly, oh, well, what did you do with this? What do you think about this? I'm thinking about this. What do you think about that? Folks are right. my ideas for me. And it's just constant. And I have Franco looking at e math on each mm -hmm. uh, side of town, so science. Donna McManus with mm -hmm. ENL sure. and World. You know, she's the one that looks at... You know, let's let's move a Spanish teacher from the middle school. Let's travel them, uh, and I, and I can, John Dabo looks at social studies programming, making sure the policy and this and overall, I run west, Jay Winicky runs east. They look at the social studies programming and they communicate where where's the best program, where's the best staff deployment. So yes, that. We need them to help us with that. And just if I can piggyback on that, I would argue this is my first year um, you know, kind of facilitating the English uh, 9 through 12. And you have to take a step back because it's not about your building. It's about what's best for the district-wide district. program. That's right. So I think it totally breaks down those, you know, helps to break down those barriers. It doesn't hurt that we all like each other, too. Right. You know, and we get along with one another. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly to say, okay, you know, it's not just about the English teachers over at East Senior. It's about the scope of the program. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know more, being involved with that, I know more about what's going on in the English right. program there now than I ever did. Mm -hmm. you know, he's got great teachers, and some of the projects his English 4 folks are working on curriculum mm -hmm. modifications, and it's just fantastic. We're forced to work together, and we're forced to get along, which is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> it helps kids, because you, you saw slides ago, for open electives, more than 20. So it, it helps. It helps the learning experience for all kids in the district. I, I worry about E senior kids, students. Jay worries about West senior students. We're worried about the kids in this district, not just one, my building, West senior. Can I ask a question? Did you ever consider, I know that like you're saying, they're going back and forth, distant learning? I mean, if we have the staff to cover it on one side, that, you know what I mean? If there's an issue with transporting students back and forth? I mean, especially maybe even... I think, I would, you know, in, I've been spending a lot of time trying to find the silver lining in the last mm -hmm. 10 months. And I think part <laughs> so, of it is... So have we. Probably now more than ever, that would right, be more but, about to, realistic. All of us, even mm -hmm. on cabinet meetings, to do them, you know, we're doing them remotely, and now 
you don't have to worry about what's going on. You worry about what's going on in your building, but you're sitting at your desk and if something happens, you're right there and you can go ahead and handle it. Or assistant principals can jump into the meetings now and you know they can kind of learn a little bit more than they otherwise would have. But to say, okay, you know, gosh, this kid from West really wants to take this class, but mm -hmm. the, the schedule and it's only this right. block. Well, I think in the future to say, well, this turn a computer on and let it connect to Google Meet. Right. We're kind of doing it now because right. We don't have the yeah. virtual day, so my students have to distance learn. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know one of his students called me yesterday and said, can I distance learn in a health class? And yeah, let's do this. I think now is the opportunity that we could look at that and maybe expand some of their opportunities oh, sure. because you, of that. You, yeah. you, you, get, you put technology in the kids' hands. You did. Right. So you're, you're letting that. Yeah. I, I graduated high school in 1998, and we had a distance learning lab in Lancaster in 1998, yep. where we sat in one classroom, and our teacher was here, and Franklin Bowl remoted in. Yep. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a teacher. Right. They were just, it was a computer class. Yep. I was at Pioneer. We had the same thing. Mm -hmm. I, we had, it was on the TV. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm floored by the inequalities between the AIS and the ALC at the two different high schools. I, I am. I'm floored. Well, remember, we used to work in silos, and we, I think Mrs. Dabble identified, we've been trapped slowly moving into an edu one educational experience. Look at what kids mm -hmm. are talking and Holly Quinn did with English. I, I used to be able to tell which England, with a, a student that came up to West, where we were, what elementary building were they in. Now it's one. one it's all readers' workshop. Yeah. But not having AIS in West Senior, when we have AIS. or I'm sorry, in yeah. East Senior, not having well, AIS, AIS it's not AIS. to the same extent. It's yeah. yeah. I mean, there was AIS in Northwood. There's AIS in East right. Middle. There's no ALC at West Senior. There is at East Senior. Probably what you spend on the Edge program could create that. No. You had an overall ALS program, right? At one point. ALC Didn't we have an ALC? ALC? I'm sorry. Yeah, was that, it, it was, was a Ebenezer. It was an Ebenezer building. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it was a budgetary issue, right? They should, yeah. That was the okay. It was sad because it was an excellent program, yeah. and I think we were in the forefront, and yeah. a lot of people at districts came to view our program. Even, I think, nationally, it was. Oh, yeah. That yeah. recognition. Yeah. 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 Then we cut it. Yeah. So, I mean, but it's like he said, it's a different type of education program and it's a little bit more flexible and it right. meets the needs of each It's almost individual. like it's a shame we can't combine the whole concept right. of both built, you know what I mean? Like We combine our ENL programs, we combine our 15 one, uh, maybe not our 15 ones, our 12 one ones, our 8 one ones, our 6 one ones. Why is this the redheaded stepchild? Well, no I think the good the thing is that we're here and we're being, we're, we have the opportunity to share what we could potentially yeah. need. So we thank you for programs. giving us these right. questions. So, I mean, it's I. good information it, what you brought It is. Here. It really is. I mean. Aren't some of those students, though, in, in that program, uh, don't they live uh, outside of the East or are they all from the, the East? ELC? Yeah. No, they're, they're all East students. They come from yeah. I see. Okay. That's something for us to look at. Yeah, yeah. Really. because, because when we were at yeah. Ebenezer, yeah. they came from both sides of town. Yeah. 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 I yeah. assumed yeah. that was going I on. I'd be I incorrect know. with the number, but I want to say it was 53 when yeah. we closed it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm reminded of that a lot because Mr. Renzoni, who's the assistant principal at East, he was a math teacher at the Correct. ABC. Yeah. Right. Um, and you know, thank goodness he came over to us and you know that whole evolution okay. happened there. You know, he's fantastic. But we often talk about just, you know, how did this work over there? This, it's, it's a really cool program, and I think even, I forget what the name of the program was, you went to see it in kind of what year did we dissolve? What year did we dissolve this? Big picture. Big picture. Big picture. Big picture. Big picture. Very similar to our whole ALC program, but with like a franchise. Yeah. Do you remember when we dissolved the ALC I can't remember. It's been a while. Charles was still here. Charles Lehman was here. Yes, he was. I want to say it was 2011. 10 or 11, for sure. It definitely was after... 11 because John was the principal by here. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the bonus here is in addition to relationships, you have a lot of seasoned administrators. We've been around in different build, <laughs> different buildings, different positions over time. So we all have to think back. Uh, Those students don't go away. We have 53 yeah. there for a reason. Right. It just, it, and it, it wasn't 
excellent, excellent programming. It was. And we used to meet, the board used to meet with student reps from each building, remember? And we had a young lady from the ALC who told us if she didn't have that program, she would have never made it. And a lot of our kids wouldn't have graduated if they didn't have that program, because it kept them. It was really a financial move because of space. Uh, East had the space, and so they would, why not put all of the over there? But I, I thought well, there were less kids that would be involved in it. Yeah. There were in the first couple of years. And then, yeah, yeah, when those kids <laughs> went through the program until they graduated. Yeah, right. They, yeah, because that's where the program moved. Yeah. Um, we developed a healthy and ass program. It yeah. operates. Yeah. That's so what, it's a sim yeah. Okay. It, yeah. And that's what. Mr. Yeah, Cronchidal does a good job of, mm -hmm. I'm going to spend two weeks. Yeah. AIS on our side isn't just uh, right. academic. It's right. kids that are struggling. And it, Pat's really like a mentor to a lot of those students. Would you consider it like, like a dad, the whereas old mom. resource room without the IEP added to yeah. it? Yes. Okay. Monica Cole had been there for a long time. Then she was superintendent in Lackawanna briefly. And then she was out in Niagara County at a uh, facility. Now she's in Florida. <laughs> So I think on the on the positive side, in addition to what um, these two gentlemen were saying that they need at the high school, I, I think that's where Dave and I come in to say, by having some more support staff in the area of math and reading support in the middle level, we can help further close those gaps before we send the students up that will help them be more confident, successful academically, socially, emotionally, and um, provide more support. For Dave and I, when we were saying about math, we share one person for math AIS. Um, so we each have a half of a person, a 0.5. Um, but we certainly could use some additional reading. Uh, but again, yes, back to what you're saying, Mrs. Bossy. So a lot of times we will have a lot of children transfer in from different schools and um, they could be in seventh and eighth grade at a third and fourth grade reading level. And now we have a lot of gaps to close in, uh, in a short amount of time before we send them to the high school and um, continue to have them now. You have to take a regents exam and this regents exam and we're trying to prepare them for graduation. So that's so where you, we could use some we help. We don't have a reading specialist now. We, we do, we each do have. They got a 0.5. Oh, for how math, long, have you, how long math. have you been sharing? So sharing our math person? Yeah. Oh geez, uh, years. Like 10 years, five years, 10, I mean. Yeah, I was a principal there. Yeah. As long as Matt was a principal. Uh, I, well, well, the way I look at it is when you see at the beginning, it's almost like when they're, the child is that young in the middle school, and if you even go down in elementary, it right. starts there. Right. And then we're trying to fix the problem at the high school level. Right. And it's becomes, it. it becomes, you know, more, you know, exaggerate at that older level, and we're seeing that the problem's in the middle. Right. We need to kind of really correct that again now in the middle, and then maybe even filter away down to the bottom so that these problems hopefully can be adjusted and fixed. Instead of waiting, and I'm you know 2010, I'm looking at 2005, so um, it's good information for us to really when yeah. we talk about our board goals and what we want to do in hearing this. Yeah. You know, it's alarming to be honest it. with you. And, I, and I'll tell you, Mr. Seaver, don't forget, you know, this board we created an additional sections right. for kindergarten. We had reading support there for this exact conversation. Mm -hmm. As soon as you know, we uh, even the secondary principal were involved in that conversation. If we can create smaller class sizes, elementary, create additional reading supports, we can we can reduce special education needs. We can we can improve reading. We can set up our middle school. So I mean, don't 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 sell the work that even though we passed three years and and that was something you know I remember saying. Geez, we have secondary principals saying, yeah, you know what? Hire at the elementary right now mm -hmm. because we need the reading. We need the, we need the smaller class sizes and. You know, and that I, I just want to say, like that—that that was an important decision that you know this room needs deserves credit for, and, and it takes a little bit longer to feel that. Well, we knew the impact was going to be that when we first talked about the smaller mm -hmm. class sizes yeah. at the elementary, bringing back cursive, bringing back the things that what we wanted as this board. Um, but just seeing the impact of where it goes, yeah. it does take seven to eight years right. before we start to see the fruits of our labor. Right. Right. But meanwhile, we still have the gaps in below. Right. So you know, when we look about the things as we discuss where do we fill these gaps and where do we use our resources and where's the most impact when a child comes and says you know we're grabbing them eight to twelve and it's working there and then you've got your top third that are on their way we've got that middle third right and then we got that bottom third we want the bottom to the middle the middle to the top
So finding these gaps where we want to go is putting us for the resources of what we feel the board would be able to help everyone. Yeah, if I could just jump in a little bit too, I think one of the things that we're hearing is, you know, and I, I'm not telling anybody anything in this room that's too prolific, but the idea that you see need scattered across in a variety of areas, and there's never one lever you can pull and say, uh -huh. that's it, I pulled this uh -huh. lever, it's, it's adjusting all of them a little bit. It's making an ad here and maximizing that ad. It's, it's what Jay Brinker was talking about in terms of looking at your staffing. And listen, no one's taking this elective class. How could we re repurpose this teacher potentially at the high school? And maybe they're providing some level of AIS or something, as you can see reflected in the last slide. Um, you know, it's the elementary, it's front loading, lower class sizes in kindergarten and first grade. It's adding that ex increased emphasis. When was the last time you guys had a reading specialist at the high school? I mean, really, on any regular basis before the past few years? Is that that's a relatively new phenomenon because you know what once you get to high school and even middle school to some extent there's this misnomer that people say you're done learning to read you are never done learning to read and i will tell you there used to be a statistic out there that said that 33 percent of all errors on a math test were just reading errors can you imagine what that statistic is right now franco was here he could tell me but i mean at the end of the day any, it's, you read in every content area. So therefore, you are seeing over the past few years some of the priorities that the people in this room have placed as pushing some of that reading support up. Yes. Middle schools have two each in each middle school. Now the high schools are seeing a value in it. We have a, aligned, as I, I don't remember who said it, but an aligned reading program at all of our elementaries for the first time, at least that I've been in this district. Reading as a reader's workshop model where kids are actually reading with books. A little mini lesson, read the book, come back, conferences individually, they're trying to push that up. They are pushing it up into the middle school now, too. It's, and it, it's not as easy as it sounds, but they're doing it. And at the high school, they're recognizing of the, the, the importance of bringing in reading specialists and teaching kids strategies as well. So it just, it's a progression. It's an evolution. Uh, well, and it you, takes a little coordinated effort. Matt, when you see that they're talking about uh, identifying and combining to fix another hole over here, yeah. that's when you're plugging everything. And what you're really doing is you're not crafting what you should be doing. And I think that that's things that when we look at this, again, as a board, you know, we, we really need to shore up some of these things here and really put our attention to bring, you know, as I keep writing here, our four, car, four core subjects. You know, when we're looking at that AIS and we can bring them up, that's only going to make the, it, it grow. Um, so, Larry, with that, though, the focus of this board is to uh, increase our students' opportunities, educational opportunities, but their scores and our graduation rates and those are little pieces that might oh that will increase it tremendously to help us absolutely you know because i think we're just know, we just want our rankings to move up so they were talking about how they would you know basically a pat on the back of talking to a student bringing them along and i think when 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 i hear these stories i worry about where the other ones are right, right? and you know meanwhile the other ones are flying and they're going and they're geared and they're motivated it's where are we bringing everybody along right. and when you notice the top will then come down and help the middle and even the bottom. So, I mean, that's where, you know, the, t the unity of the school, the morale, that's all plays an important part role of this. Um, it, we talk about, uh, you know, student and staff climate surveys. And I know um, Mrs. Persico is going to probably share with you the results from our climate survey that they did out in the fall, the whole district did, uh, for students, parents, and uh, teachers. Um, but at East Senior, uh, we've started to practice uh, for the last several years. Last year, excluded because, well, you know, it was a bit of a mess in the spring. Uh, but end of year staff survey, where it really ranges from everything to uh, programs. You know, I want an evaluation of me and the assistant principals. Are we visible? What are your thoughts on this? What can we do to make your walk a little bit better and easier and more efficient? Um, and we do that, and that's we spend a lot of time in the summer going through that for us. Um, what we've sometimes also piggybacked onto that is, you know, Mrs. Pavel will come down and go, um, can you add these three questions about the library in there too? Because I wanted some feedback too. Uh, or Trojans Take Action or a leadership program. And teachers will often utilize that tool to get feedback for their programs too. So it's pretty cool to get that. And, you know, anonymous data is sometimes, you know, painfully honest. And that's okay because there's some truth in that. And that's somebody's perception, which means it's their reality. Um, and it gives you a chance to reflect and say, okay, well, what can I do differently? Or how can I become a better principal, assistant principal, librarian, teacher, whatever it is? Um, the teachers, we also um, I started asking them, you know, what do you, you know, what are you good at teaching? What do you feel you're good at? And what do you want to teach? 
you know, would you be willing to teach an ALC section or work with Mrs. Hongs and Mrs. Sorensen in the ELL? Just so that we can kind of gauge interest on that too. Doesn't mean, and the survey's kind of ongoing right now, we've got 43 responses so far um, <clears throat> at this point this year, but just to say, if you could pick your schedule, and everybody knows it's not a guarantee, but it's just, I'd like to try teaching this course. I've never taught that before, or please don't make me ever teach Global One, you know, type of thing like that. So, and that's good to know, because if somebody doesn't have their heart and soul into it, that's why, you know, maybe they need to stay with US history and government or something like that. Um, so it's just, to me, that's really good data. As far as student surveys, nothing really written, but just talking with student council officers. Um, Mary Cooper, who, you know, you know, she's been on several committees uh, with you guys before. She comes down in, well, a normal year, last year. She would come down and do the Pledge of Allegiance in like the moment of silence every day. So I could pick Mary's brain for at least five minutes every day. And she's a student council officer or just walking down and say, hey, you guys are in a meeting. What do you need from us? What's going on? Or bringing kids in and say, come on and have, have some donuts, have some juice. You know, we're going to pull you out of study hall. Just talk to us a little bit. What's going on? If you could pick one thing, what would you do to make your school a little bit better? So it's not written, but we just kind of try to pick different kids all the time and just build those relationships, like Jay said, because kids will just come up to you and say, you guys need to do a better job at this, or can I help you with this, or can I try this? And sometimes it's, oh, well, we can't do that. But sometimes it's, more often than not, it's, let's give it a shot. In worst case, it doesn't work. We don't do it again. But best case, we all enjoy coming to school a little bit more. And you feel more of a sense of ownership. Yeah, and it, it builds leadership. Oh, for sure, oh, yeah. for sure. So, you know, whereas it's not a climate survey, it's more of just an ongoing climate survey of, mm -hmm. my door's open, come talk to me, you know, and being out in lunches every day, I know Wes is the same thing, it's just talking to kids while they're eating. You know, we're going to their practices and just making sure that they see you as a relatable person, even as the old people who run the building and, you know, but just that they know they can approach you with an idea and you're not gonna just say, well, you're a kid, you don't know what you're talking about. It's, yeah, that's a great idea. Because they have a unique perspective of ownership in the school. So let me, let me ask you this. When you guys do, I see you do an end of the year survey and then uh, Wes does it. Okay. So when you guys get together and talk a little bit about are you getting more of an honest answer because it's more or less no names attached. I see you break off into groups. So, I mean, are we at the stage where it would be common that one practice or both practices would be used at the same time at the same time at the same schools? What I'm saying is you're, you're, doing, you're doing surveys, you're not, you're breaking off into groups slash right. group and talking to people. Which way is working better right now? How long has that been going on? This is a great question. I love this question because I spend all day long from the moment I, and mm -hmm. I'm going to try to answer a question. All right, no, I, <laughs> this, this is, I think about this every day because you can feel the building. The moment, the moment I get into the building, you, know, you go, you greet the kids. At the end of the day, you say goodbye to them. I'm visible. And you, the first hour and a half, I'm walking around the building. I'm visiting every classroom. After you greet the kids, you walk, go to PE, go to every classroom. So I want, and, and Jay said this, I want students to know that I'm approachable. Do I need a survey? I, I don't feel I need a survey. I think an honest discussion with kids, I think an honest discussion with staff. Uh, we do meet I meet my union. We have many layers of, of leadership. You know, you have positional the department chairs. We meet regularly. Uh, I, I'm, I'm in charge of four. Donna McManus is in charge of three. Pat's in charge of, uh, of, of three, where they go and talk to those leaders every day. Then there's your union reps. That are, and and I, I don't break the contract, so we don't have grievances. Uh, so what do I worry about? Quality of life. How are, what's going on in the classrooms? How can we get better? Every month, every day, I talk to the union reps. Uh, how's everything going here? How, how are the kids? How are the teachers? How is everything? So just by walking around all day long, get a hold of me at my desk, you're not. You're just not gonna get a hold of me because I wanna make sure that the teachers and the kids are having a great day every day. And I'm gonna get that. A survey does serve a purpose, but I want people to come. I don't want a survey to become a gripe or somebody to say, 
you know, if you fill out a survey, Scott Ferkins can tell who, f who filled it out, so you better not tell the truth and, and complain. I don't want that. And I've heard that before. Well, no, I, and I mean, and that's I why I'm saying I was wondering how what he was getting back, yeah. Jay was getting back on that, because in some aspects, when, when I deal with employees, it's a lot easier on the survey monkey to do it this way. And then there's also people that are communicative that right. can come to you and tell you that there's something. Right. So that tells you two different sides of the, you know, the district, the east yeah. a little bit and the west on the other side. But I'm just saying, the, being able to gather that information right. and being able to, people find it easier just to fill out the survey and away it goes, and you hope that it is addressed. Right. Your group is meeting together face to face, and but it's just like the staff, I guess the staff has to go to who? Well, they, they can go in their department, to their department okay. chair. They okay. can go to, they have union meetings. There's many layers of who they can go to address okay. a complaint. And that's and including I, retirees? Do we do any um, exit retiree? We do. Okay. We do. Thank you. <laughs> very similar at the middle schools. I, exactly same. We're very visible. We're accessible to students, staff, parents. We have the same layer of meetings, constantly touching base with our kids, our staff, um, our students all the time. Um, so I didn't want to. So you don't do you don't do surveys with teachers? No. Okay. We've done surveys this year differently, um, district wise. Um, Dave and I have had to, but typically we kind of operate a little differently than that. Okay. Yeah, I agree, Jay and Sharon. Yeah. Just uh, you know, I can tell you right now today, eighth grade social studies we're talking about muckrakers and and up in St. Clair, uh, science eight was talking about the seasons and hurricanes, and it's just. Being out in the building, being in those classrooms, seeing the teachers, talking to students, that's, that's the best survey I can possibly gather. All, I, I got more data today and more information today being out in that building than I could possibly do by any, with any survey. Uh, I think we can all, I speak for everybody, the last 10 months have been horrible because we couldn't do that. We couldn't be with kids, we couldn't do what we love doing. So um, uh, yeah, he pretty much summed it up. You get that, you get, you get that feel of the building feel. right away. Yep. Kind of cool to learn that eighth grade social studies on the west side learned the exact same thing my son learned in eighth grade social studies right. on the east side today. But Talk that's record. you know that's, once that again is the curriculum. That's not always been the case. They used to fight over when to stop uh, in seventh grade social studies. That was one of the biggest conflicts in the district. Civil War after the Civil War, oh, right? Reconstruction. Oh man. <laughs> I watched it come through on Google Classroom. The same thing, yeah. exact same topic today. So kind of cool. So. Question number seven and eight really directed at the high school um, as far as, you know, what can we do to encourage more students to take courses and more AP courses? Um, you know, increasing the credit minimum for seniors would certainly force, I guess, kids to take an additional course. Um, so if, you're, if that was, I mean, that's an easy answer, but may not be the right answer also. You know, Jay and I have talked about this because there's, different family situations where the kid needs to get out early so they can go to work or what have you. Um, so that's, it could be, you know, that's a bigger discussion. That's the, you know, I guess a quick and easy answer. But again, coming back to that, the course offerings that are high interest to those students, you know, what do they want to take, you know, and what's beneficial to them? Um, what's high interest? You know, I know the business department's trying to modernize some of their courses to say, you know, how do we hook these kids into taking these courses? Um, app development, things like that, gaming. Is there you know, a way to get some non-academy kids into academy classes on occasion? And we can do that. Um, you, know, you kind of have to go case by case when there's seats, but you know, to do those things, um, you know, we talk a lot about how do you increase those AP um, numbers. And I think part of it, there is sometimes a discouragement with kids of, if I don't get a five, I don't get credit. But if you can piggyback a dual enrollment on top of that, now you've get, you're, you can probably get the credit for this. You, know, any, you want to take this class and challenge yourself, you'll get that transcripted credit, and you're going to go to Buff State, UB, or wherever you want to go. You've earned a college credit already. And I think that, you know, the, not, the students having a knowledge of, I'm going to have something. There's, is, there's, some, I don't know, there's a prize at the end for this that it means something to me. And I can take this with me beyond East Senior or West Senior. 
you know, I think that's going to, you know, that would certainly be beneficial as we expand those programs. Um, the dual enrollments will help as well. Good. For the for students to make sure they're taking what they're supposed to, do they meet with their guidance counselors individually yes. and they sit down and go through? Every schedule is signed off. Yeah, right. by the yeah. guidance counselor, by the, guidance counselor yeah. the parents, the parents, yeah. student. Yep. Um, yeah, that's why the process takes so long. When Jay says it's always scheduling season, it's you know those conversations are always you know as you're a freshman, kind of trying to map out. Here's where we think you're going, and you revisit it as a sophomore. Okay, you're still on that track. You decided to join this academy, right. so we make sure of this. And you know, part of our child study team discussions is always looking at a kid who may not be doing as well as they like. So you have to come down and say. Remember, you're on this track. This is where you said you wanted to go. So here's what we need to do. What can we do to support you? How do we help you do that? So, yeah, it's that constant communication of student right. services. Right. Yeah, because so many times students just so frequently. Yeah. students just don't know. I don't want to say what is best for them in the long run, right. but you know they kind of need to be led along to say, you know, you need to take these things to get this prize at the end. Right, and I know, you know Dr. Merkel just had you know, like the high school information on talking to the elective classes to the eighth grade students. Um, and we do a lot of that. You know, the teachers in the elective areas for sure are constantly, you know, I use the term recruiting kids. Mm. They go to their colleagues' class right. and say, can I have five minutes, I have a planning block and talk to you, you know, about taking CAD or materials processing or a theater class or a different music class or even a math elective in some cases. Um, when, drum up that enrollment. when Matt gives you that, I'm going to say slide, Excel spreadsheet, but it's not Excel, it's Google, yeah, it's Google. Excel version yeah. of it. What's it called? Sheets. Sheets. Sheets, okay. Google Sheets. When he gives you that Google Sheets, it's gonna, you're going to see every elective, what we offer, how many kids. The data is unbelievable. Okay. It's really good. But that, that's my little part. Like, kudos to you. Like, when I talk to parents, you're coming to high school, this is a very supportive community. This is a very supportive board. You offer to this community a lot, from extracurricular to AP to Syracuse to, to N, NU, BOCES, you offer a lot. You know, we, we have our extracurricular on one page in font six. It's in font six because you, if you put it in 12, it's for a four page document. Other schools don't have that. We do, you, you, you PTAC, you offer a lot of things to this community. It's a vast, you know, do kids fall, th I don't think kids fall through the cracks in West Seneca, I don't. You are always the first ones to put out on, on the front lines. What do we need? Do we need an ALC program? Do we need BOCES? What else do we need? You're always asking that. You do a very good job. You know, we're, we need to assess a lot of this stuff and get in line, but, we're knocking on doors. Kids that, f kids that are not successful, it's not without trying. What sport can we get you in? What music program? What BOCES program? What can we get you in? The struggle is, is, is usually not with the students. It's, it's a family issue. Mm -hmm. But you do a phenomenal job. So, Would I, you I, guys be able to tell us anything about um, over the past, the BOCES was an issue due to starting that students not finishing the cost. And we made the adjustment and we've looked at it to where we wanted as a board to really focus on that. How's been the participation and you know people still getting up in the morning taking that bus because they go to a different school? How's been the enrollment and everything going on with that part? Very good, yep. very good. We make sure that any student that goes, they come to school. Good. It's a carrot. You're not gonna go it, what both sees eight to nine thousand dollars more yeah times two so you you you, you are funding a, an 18 16 18 thousand dollars more you got to come to school to get that you have to and we we kids know that that if they want to get to that program they have to come to school because it prioritizes that too like mm -hmm. if they're seeing attendance issues they, they will communicate with the schools right. as well. So it's really a Well, I just think as a board is what we've invested in and what right. we were told yeah. before is that, you know, they'd sign up, not go, we paid for it, and we're cold in the carrot. Correct. Yep. You know, and I, I just say now we're into it and we're at 156 kids. Are 140 going or once, you know, are we really having that? And honestly, Johnny's saying, listen, I like electricity. I want to be in the electric right. program, an electrician. Uh, yeah, you got to be here for right. the other part. It's, you it's, got it. You know, and I think hopefully it opens up to where 
you know, they, they, they know that to complete this, they've got to come to the other part and would open up communication. We assess that going in, Good. and then after the junior year, we make sure that their attendance They're is. They're all on track. Yeah, okay. you can't, admit, it's 11,000, and I'm just throwing big numbers, 11,000 right. educated kid at West. You had on both seats, that's 20,000. We have to make sure that they're going there. That's a huge investment. They have an, the students have an obligation to attend those programs. And I think the P Tech when we started oh, that, that you know, I mean, that, that was a mm -hmm. five-year investment for that child, and right. and what we saw the success of just that one student that was here of how it made him come to school. Right. And I think that's the thing. If we start taking care of certain individuals that need that attention, before right. you know it, everybody's taking and care. And those of are the discussions we have with kids freshman and sophomore year. Hey, you're going to BOCES junior year. And the counselors, your attendance is not good after yeah. freshman year. You have to clean this up sophomore to get to that BOCES program. So those are the constant, pro, constant uh, discussions we're having with, with it families. Back to, you know, those counselors meeting with those kids mm -hmm. freshmen, what do you want to do? I really want to be an electrician. My dad's an electrician. Okay, well, here's the old game plan then. And okay. it's, you got to make sure you, make it's sure very you come important. into school. Yeah. Stay on track with your courses. You know, if you fall behind freshman, sophomore year, it gets tougher to do. So, you know, that starts to give them that carrot. And that's the plus side of having, you know, the PPS staff, you know, student services in our buildings that we have. You know, one, they're excellent at what they do. We've got um, pretty good ratios mm -hmm. with that. Of, you know, they can give the individual attention to the kids. That's good. Mm -hmm. And it's just so good to help them because, you know, they are teenagers. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and... Are we getting good feedback from the students and the parents before to where it was a draw on a lottery? Are we getting? Oh, oh gosh. Yeah, oh. <laughs> That's why I keep mentioning to you. Yeah. Okay. I want to keep telling you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I want to keep saying that to you. And there's a lot of programs. It's not only electrical. Oh, it's science, medicine, it's our dentistry. We have animal science, we yeah. have law. I toured the place have, and went through you know, a play. Yeah, so many, I'm a, yeah so it's many awesome. programs that they students can, um, and like they, like they are all saying, BOCES also encourages that, and then at the yeah. end, when they go through their law or med whatever they go through, we interview them, our bo the board goes there, and, ta and yeah. the kids will stand up and right. say, you know what, I did two years of law, and it's not what I really want to go to school right. for, but at least they have that right. opportunity in mm -hmm. that face of those. Yeah. Um, you offer a very, very comprehensive, mm -hmm effective, varied. You offer a lot in West Seneca. Yeah. You do. Academies, yep. BOCES, yep. Uh, it, the extracurricular, all the sports. It's really, you, you should be very proud of what you, what you offer this community. Yeah, you invest. <coughs> you invest. And you see that at the end of the year when, when we have you know, scholarship night, $120,000, yeah. the community recognizes that. And it's, it's a varied academy or, or uh, scholarship night it's not just for students that are going to college it's it's varied and that's because you offer a varied educational experience your, my favorite night of the year is it has nothing to do with me the student of excellence day yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And seeing where those kids are off to yeah. right mm -hmm. i know it's just, it's, a, it's just a sense of accomplishment for those kids but it's that's a, that's the whole community doing that right no one should ever throw stones at West Seneca education. They shouldn't. Mm -hmm. I never want to hear that stuff because, first of all, it's, it's bad for students to hear that. But what you offer, I've been in a, in a couple other districts. I see other districts. You don't get that in other towns. And I don't want to name names here, but I know districts don't offer what you offer to these kids here. And, and the fact that we're, we've been talking for an hour and a half, you care about this stuff. You know, it's really awesome to work for you. Yeah, it really is. You know, it doesn't it, feel like that long at all. No. no. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, we really appreciate, really appreciate the time. The time. You need to hear this. Time you need to hear, hear like, yeah. what you offer. I, I, I say it at freshman orientation. I say it at the end of the year. Like, thank the community. Like, what you just experienced in West Seneca is awesome. Be proud of this. It just, you don't hear that enough. You should. It's a very good education program. You know, I, our, our focus two years ago, well, it is literacy, but it's also getting kids to come to school. You know, I can run data going back a decade. The kids that don't come to school aren't successful. And how do we get those kids to come to school? Is it another program? Is it, what is it? And we're still trying, you know, that's our biggest fight, knocking on doors. But 100%, 100%, 
not 99.9, 100%. If you come to school and you don't miss 10%, you're going to graduate. So getting the kids to school, and that's where, you know, two years ago when I said I need another counselor, you said, pony up, let's do it. And that's helping. That's getting more people into those homes and saying, what can we do to get your son and child into school? But once they're here, solid. Good job. Thank you. All right, last thing, and, and, and I'll end, wrap it up. At the high school level, how will you ensure that minimum class sizes are utilized? This, is, again, is a four-day discussion, but it's a long discussion. We, when does scheduling start? It starts in February when a student, uh, go, when a counselor comes down and starts putting in requests. We meet in April to take those requests and balance out staffing and to finalize what we're going to offer. And I kind of mentioned it before. If two kids over here want a class and 15 kids over here, we're not running two and 15. We're going to move the kids over here, one of seven. So we might have kids going over here. AOIT, Digital Media, is an academy, only runs on east side. Uh, AP uh, Art, Studio Art, only runs on east side, so the kids travel. That's one way we do it. All right, we either travel, we always say, we try not to travel students, but we'll move staff every other day will move students to maximize. Also, it, what, you, what we talk about in March, or I'm sorry, April, all of that goes in a computer in July. So now that's the second phase. You have to understand this. The computer's gonna maximize it and see what, where the kids are going, all right? And then finally, we really don't finalize those classes because students realize, you know, a year and a half ago they wanted to go for, to BOCES they may go the first week of school and say, this isn't for me anymore. They have change of hearts and lives after that. So we really don't finish scheduling until I always say like October 15th is when everything's settled. And then we start to immediately start ramping up for the next year. So from April to October is really how do you minimize, how do you get those minimum class sizes? How do you, how do you finalize that? Uh, you, also, you get what we call ugly number situations. You get 38 kids to, run a, to, to go in a class, all right? You're not going to run a class of 38, but you're also never going to get it divided down the middle. So sometimes you may see a class of 25 and a class of 13. Mm -hmm. I remember years ago, you know, I was told don't run a class or run the class at 32. I did. And then a previous, previous, previous superintendent called me up and said, what do you run a class of 32 for? I was like, well... You told me months ago to run to 32. And then we, we divided it, and it was 32 went from 25 and 7. And then months later, I got a phone call. Why are you running a class of 7? Because <laughs> that 32 wasn't going to divide to 16 and 16. It went to 25 and 7. Yeah. I, I couldn't win. That's I couldn't the tough win. thing we run into with the high schools because, you know, whereas, you know, at middle school, it's more standard where an eighth grader Separate takes certain grade. things. Mm -hmm. Right, because they have some classes, yeah. but in high school, you know, Jay has 1,200 different schedules, really, and I have 800 different schedules because, you know, this kid takes AP this, but Regents that, and then he's in orchestra and chorus, and he wants to also take a tech class, but his buddy doesn't want to take the tech class. He takes a business class, so all of a sudden, as it filters through this machine, it's, it blows my mind, and now, you know, we've got on our side a counselor, and Jay's got a head counselor who... They see this and they can look at it and go, if I were to move this class here, I could get four more kids into that class. And I go, how do you even figure that out? And, and they hit it. And you know, they mess with percentages to try to get as many kids into every single thing that they want. Uh, it's not always possible. You, if you can't because you're scheduling for you know, 1,200 right. unique situations or 800. But we get pretty darn close. Um, and it's a credit to the folks that you know, put so much time and hours into this. Um, so that's really what it comes down to, though, is, you know, I guess if the, is, we try to what's be a, the minimum? We try to balance. We have a lot of chefs in the kitchen on scheduling and staffing. You know, we did the cabinet. Um, the cabinet <laughs> administrators. We have uh, department chairs. We have a lot of people to make sure that what you're getting is efficient and also balancing mm -hmm. offerings, making sure that we do have courses to offer kids. That's a long discussion. I don't, yeah. and, and that's, just, so you guys get the data, we, we can come and. Like this year's current schedule, right. by October, Jay and I were meeting with department chairs and cabinet you know, directors and facilitators, 
and saying, how's everything going so far? We're only a month in, but what are you seeing? And How's also having going? those discussions, if you don't get more kids, we're going to have to go in a different direction. Right. So you know, if this department story, isn't... That's what's helped. It's not just collaboration between the two mm -hmm. of us at the high school, but, you know, the department chairs in science are in the meetings together. And it really gets at that, you know, back when John and I were assistants, you hear stories of, well, John McSwan's hiding this teacher over there, and on East they have, you know... They only teach four classes and they have to have coffee and West has this. And now we all sit there and we go, no, none of that's ever been true. So we all hear the same discussions and we say, okay, right. you know, we've had his science teacher will come over sometimes and go, you guys need some help over here. And that was, you know, that never happened, you know, 15 years ago. So that's been a nice evolution of just how can we help one another? And one of the big byproducts of this efficiency is you cut out the nonsense of J what Jay was saying, and now we're talking about literacy. We're talking about how to get kids into school. We're talking about attendance. Mm -hmm. That's what we've been talking about the last three years at department leaders. We're not talking about what's East doing, what's it's, West doing. That stuff gets, it's disruptive about, to the yeah, system if you think. teaching and learning yeah. and the important things versus, you know, right. the bickering stuff. And we're, I think we're in a, a great place now. It's just been fantastic. And, Really, it is. Any follow up on that eight? I know that's a long. It's a long. To get the data, when when Matt gives you all that stuff, and mm -hmm. we can talk about every little class and and how it became what it is. I mean, really, follow up questions on that for for uh, Mr. Winicky and I. Mm -hmm. That's a long. There's some kids that skip lunch, uh, don't have a lunch period on purpose because they want to take a course. Absolutely. So God bless them, they can eat when they go home. Absolutely. <laughs> you know what they want to do that. Absolutely. Does block scheduling make it harder to schedule the kids or it doesn't make a difference? No, no, I don't think so. No, I, I, I don't want to keep beating the same thing, but you know, he's got a student that couldn't fit AP lit so she comes over to, to me and gets AP He's lab. that kid who wants to take AP Gov and they come to us. Yeah. When I, like you said, I have a student who couldn't fit health into their schedule for three and a half years. He's a senior. I said, well, Russ has an opening. Right. By moving Andrew, kids you know, sure. back and forth, we, the building's constantly moving. By moving them and sharing them, we've mm -hmm. really, and then whatever. And exists now oh, with our hybrid models where, you know, and, it's kind of cool because you get to see different kids. You know, you yeah. have the West kids coming in, and when he was on his run, you know, they got their blue jerseys on in the halls and stuff, and nobody bats an eye about no, that anymore. No, it's fun. It's fun. You know, These are my cookies for my football team when they went. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Are, we, are we transporting with buses? Yes, yes. Uh, all so day are long. Are all kids day also long. allowed to drive? Correct. Or yes. is that no? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's very seamless. You know, the first day. Some kids might get confused. Was I starting at West today or was I starting at East? It's very seamless. We just do it so often. It's, it's part of how we're scheduling. So that mitigates and that's, and again, what's offered on the East is offered on the West. And if it can't fit, if we have to be more efficient, then we move students or move staff. It's a nice system. It's, and we're maximizing. look at the distant learning as well. As a piece yeah, of and that's, that is, that's the opportunity yeah. we have moving forward too. Yeah, yeah those Chromebooks are, are yeah. neat. Those are going to offer. Sorry if we chewed up a lot of your time. <laughs> no, 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 I we, apologize. We love to hear what's going on yeah, in the district. You. Um, you know, we, we see a little bit in this boardroom, but not nearly um, what you have to offer us. So it's, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. No, Thanks, thank guys. You for us. Thank, thank you, you, David. Well, we All right, brother. <laughs> thank you. Uh, nice jump job, in there. <laughs> <laughs> there's water in the refrigerator. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, if anybody needs water, there's water Thank in the refrigerator. Thanks all very right. much to our secondary principals. We appreciate all the time. Yes. We have Dr. Merkel up next. Hey, everybody. Hello. 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 I'd like to start and congratulate you for taking on the role for NIFA. Um, thank mm. you so much. I'm glad you stepped up to the plate so I didn't. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Standing up yeah. there, you can. Yes. Good evening, everybody. It's uh, great to see everybody again. I, I really miss everybody. Um, you know, uh, I really enjoy getting to talk with everybody, and, and I've missed that. So, 
pleasure to be here tonight. Um, I'm really excited. I will try to be timely, but uh, feel free to move along. So, getting right into it. Um, Can I switch with you? The man behind the screen. Yeah. <laughs> Pay no attention to him. <laughs> <laughs> so, New York State CTE program initial approval and reapproval. Uh, this was quite a challenge this year. Cheryl Winstill retired uh, about two years ago, and she warned us all, get, get everything you need done now before I retire. Uh, well, I, didn't, I wasn't fortunate enough to be here yet before she retired. So there's been a, quite a regime change at, in the CTE office at the state, and uh, they're doing a lot of great things, and they're trying to make things more consistent. Cheryl was a, an awesome woman. Um, a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge. When you did applications, she kind of knew what you meant that you put on there. The, the new people are trying to be very by the book, and this is what we want, and they're reformatting documents that are old. So this was quite a challenging process. Um, I think I was one of the first people in the area to really go through the process, the, the program approval process with this regime, talking to my colleagues in other districts and at BOCES. Um, you know, they kind of felt the same pain that I felt. Either way, we got through it. So, Academy of Business and Finance and the Academy of Digital Media, after much back and forth with the state, are finally reapproved for another five years. It's a five year approval. Awesome. Initial approval, Engineering Academy. We got initial approval. That was just finalized in November. So that gives us three approved programs, which is uh, pretty awesome because it opens us up for some other things, such as uh, the Perkins grant, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, I just want to really quickly share with you some of the uh, things that were part of the approval process. Um, so, let me, that's all right, I will log in, I think. Dun, 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 dun. Let me go. Mm. Yeah, let me go back here. Hold on once. This is where I always shut my computer off. You miss an H. You miss an H. Finger, so it probably gave me something extra. It's WSB school. You have WC. Oh, no, no. Go back one. No. Go back, back oh. another. No. Oh. <laughs> another S. Throw an S in there. WSC. S. S. C. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. This is the one. Rumple. Still skip. <laughs> Okay, so uh, part of the reapproval process, and we didn't have this, uh, at least not this entire thing, was uh, doing an employability profile for the kids. So there's two parts to the employability profile. The soft skills, um, uh, I like to call them employability skills. We're kind of moving away from soft skills. But uh, attendance, punctuality, those kind of things. So um, these things are assessed uh, in the in our previous two academies, IT, digital media, and business and finance, through the BEEP portfolio, which is now the college and career portfolio. They changed the name of that. Um, but for engineering, we added that on. So they're constantly assessed on that throughout the program, 10th, 11th, 12th grade, at the end of each course, the teacher goes through and rates them. So they're getting feedback constantly, and, and they're learning what areas that they can improve upon throughout the program. So it's, it's continuous growth throughout the program. The second part is the technical skills. So we have the career skills and the, the technical skills. So they're also getting feedback on the individual technical skills that they need throughout the program. So we didn't have the technical component for the other two programs, so we went through and made employability profiles for the technical components of the other two programs. So very important document because the kids are getting feedback throughout these programs, which is very essential. 
Um, so the self-study, this is part of the reapproval process and the approval process. So we go through the background, um, we do a review of the curriculum, which all this goes to our advisory board and they give us feedback to make sure that our curriculum is current with the industry standards. Um, we also have to do a three-part technical assessment. So there's a written component, there's a performance component, and then there's also a local component, um, which for the other two programs, the college and career portfolio and for engineering, we're also doing a uh, portfolio for them as well. It's a little bit different, um, but it's, it's similar to uh, what we have for the other two programs. We review the teacher certification of all the teachers who teach in the program. Post-secondary articulation. We've talked about this a lot already tonight uh, with the secondary principals up here, the agreements with the colleges. Uh, we've done a lot of work I've personally done a lot of work on this the last year. I've done a lot of work with my colleagues. We're at a good spot with colleges right now. Colleges are hurting for students. I don't know if they've overexpanded. I don't know if there's less kids going to college, maybe a little bit of both. The colleges want our kids, which puts us in a good position to ask for awesome opportunities for our kids. So um, with getting the engineering program approved, we were able to add an advanced study agreement uh, for DF-109. Uh, technical drafting for the engineering kids so that's an extra advanced studies kids or advanced studies class transcripted credit that our kids can get um, some of the other credits like Bryant and Stratton right now are articulated credits so you only really get credit for those classes if you go to Bryant and Stratton and a lot of times it's only for a specific program so most CTE programs around the area are really trying to get to the dual enrollment advanced studies where you're getting those transcripted credits that you can take anywhere. So I've, I've also been uh, working with the, with the colleges and with the principals on trying to get those agreements as well. Um, I, I worked with Mr. Winicky on the Hilbert agreement. Uh, been working with the, the folks at SUNY Erie are awesome. We've had a long-standing relationship with them. Deb Schmidt just retired, but Caitlin Louth took over for her, so it, it's been a seamless transition. They were able to work together last year. Um, I've been working with Medai on trying to revive some old agreements we had with them. So a lot of work around that, and it, it was great to go through this process of reapproval because I really had a deep dive into our programs and pull them apart um, from you know the very skeletons and, and establish everything and then take it back to our teachers and say, all right, you know, this is what we need to be doing. And part of the reapproval re process was, was getting all those things figured out and making sure we were all on the same page. So it was very important to go through all that stuff through the process. Work-based learning, um, we had very well established in our academy programs. Um, engineering, the engineering academy didn't have a whole lot of work-based learning. So, now with the approval process, we were able to work some of that back in, and we're working with Moog on, on uh, getting hopefully a CEIP program with a couple students, and starting to, to get these uh, people re-involved in, in that academy and, and trying to grow those opportunities. Um, some of the machines that we were talking about at West Senior, uh, some opportunities for some work-based learning there, creating products for, for other teachers, for other departments, and things like that. So we'll have some work-based learning opportunities in-house, some outside, um, but a, a great opportunity, again, to look back at, or you know, to look at these things and do a deep dive and figure out what we need to do. The employability profile we just looked at, the resources, uh, both uh, facilities, uh, machines, um, human resources, all that kind of things, accessibility for students, making sure our programs are available to all of our students, and professional development plans. So, um, you know, it was really great to go through this process and, and to evaluate all of the things. Um, the supplemental forms, again, we had to provide this, uh, talk about the teachers in all of the departments, the coursework, um, how the uh, standards crosswalk to national standards, work-based learning component. You're kind of just providing evidence for all of the, all of the parts of the self-study. 
So I just wanted to share briefly with you what that process looked like, uh, just so uh, you can understand how comprehensive it was to go through that. So now all of those programs are either reapproved or initially approved for the next five years, starting this school year. So our engineering academy students can get the technical endorsement at the end of this year, which is awesome uh, because that does a lot for the students as well as us as a district. Is that for new kids entering the program or anyone who's been in it already? Just uh, for the kids starting graduating this year okay. oh, so and even, forward. Okay. Yep. So even the, the seniors this year. Yep. Oh, great. We had, we got it done by December, which was the deadline for the kids for this year. So they they are eligible for it as well, which is pretty awesome. Perkins Grant funding, again, so right now, um, if you don't have at least three CTE programs, your Perkins grant most likely gets signed over to BOCES. So they've already scolded me for this, and I said, we're sending you a lot more kids, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but, but it's not a ton of money, um, but it is another opportunity for, um, as part of the Perkins grant, I, I've never been through it before, so I'm learning about it. Um, I know the process starts in the spring, so this is on my docket to, to start learning. Um, about and I'll talk later on in my presentation about some of the collaboration I've been doing with local uh, local groups like the BOCES and stuff like that. Um, one of the focuses of that group is uh, Perkins or one of the breakout groups if you will is around the po Perkins grant and funding. Uh, we had a meeting the other day on it but there was no information out from the state on it yet so we're, we'll be meeting again soon. Uh, but now that we have that third program that's a state approved program, we can hopefully uh, bring back our, our portion of that. And um, there's a comprehensive local needs assessment that goes with that. So I'll be looking at doing that and what that entails uh, to help us gain eligibility for this grant funding. Communication, so again, you know, as the, the, the principals talked about communication is, is so important. So I've tried to make a lot of adjustments and make sure that we're communicating more effectively with our students. Um, I called Scott Ferkins a month or two ago and I said, hey, you know, I, I think if I use School Messenger, I can get the message out a lot quicker to a lot more people. So he hooked me up with School Messenger. You can see about 10 messages or so that I've sent out uh, to tell families about high school information night, academy night. Um, I've been working with the transportation department in the high schools in coordinating the transportation for BOCES. Uh, quite challenging with two different cohort models, but we, we're, we got through it and we're, we're running great. Um, I've, I've been able to work with uh, BOCES, so Matt called me, Mr. Bystrack called me, uh, a month or two ago, and with a three cohort model at West, we, we did lose a little bit of in-person time at BOCES, so we were able to work with BOCES, and so they go on their cohort day in person at BOCES, but they also go on Wednesdays. So um, most districts aren't sending to BOCES on Wednesdays, so they have less density in their population on Wednesdays, which allowed us some flexibility to send some more of our kids on Wednesday. So, uh, the transportation transports all three cohorts from West on Wednesdays. And if it's their in-person cohort day on West, they also go there. If not, they go back home and do their classes remotely. Um, so this using school messenger has been able to allow us to send out phone messages, emails, and communicate information very quickly to families to tr help make it as seamless as possible. Also, I started using Google Classroom for our internships. I'll talk more about internships later, but putting those opportunities out there for the students. Um, you know, internships have, have been a big challenge this year, but uh, that's one avenue. Um, we used to use Remind a lot, and a lot of the feedback last year was there was too many different programs. You know, everybody was using different things. So I've been trying to use what they're already using their student email, Google Classroom, stuff that they're comfortable with, stuff that they know how to use, stuff that their parents are tapped into so that you know it's consistent and they're getting the information that they need. 
Textbooks, we took a, a big look at textbooks, um, especially over the summer, looking to come into this year with uh, being fully remote. We found that some of the textbooks that we had purchased over the last year or two actually came with some digital licenses already. So we were able to tap into that. Um, but we also had some older textbooks that were from the early 2000s. So when we looked to replace those, we, we packaged as much as we could with getting physical textbooks and getting those digital licenses. Most cases, we got five, six year digital licenses. Um, we were able to work together with the curriculum cabinet and you know we all kind of said all right who needs what and and we were able to work together and prioritize and we were able to replace a lot of those old textbooks and get those digital licenses simultaneously so it was it was a, a big win i think right here um, coming into this school year starting off digitally and even now um, being in the hybrid model it was great to be able to do that uh, and to work together collaboratively with the cabinet So collaboration, I talked a little bit about this already. Um, so I'm a member of ACTIA, which is the Association for Career and Technical Administrators, or Career and Technical Education Administrators. They started some priority groups this year. So one is around program approval. Um, I'm helping a lot of <laughs> other places now because I went through it, which is, which is great. Um, One's around the Perkins grant and one's around recruitment. So it's been great to, this group has been awesome. Um, not only for these things, but uh, whenever I, I need feedback, I, I have a survey I'm gonna show you in a few minutes. And um, I was able to put it out to this group. Hey, you guys are already doing this survey because it's tied to the Perkins grant. You'll see a lot through my part, uh, presentation. A lot of these things are intertwined and come back together. Um, so I was able to put it out to this group. Hey, what are you guys doing? Show me your survey because the state tells you what data they want But they don't tell you the questions to ask so um, Some of them are sensitive topics and things like that So I was able to go to the group and say hey What are you doing and pick pieces from each one and then add add a little bit of my stuff in there and uh, you know, it's just it, it's become it, it, it's a very good group for me to lean on, kind of like the principals group that that um, my colleagues have. Uh, it, it's been a great group for me to get ideas from, for me to, to run ideas past. Um, just, it, it, I can't say enough about it. Local group participation, uh, as Mrs. Bussey just said, um, as recently as a couple days ago, I was elected president of the board uh, for NIFIC. Very excited about that. Um, great board there, a lot of opportunity, a lot of people chomping at the bit to, to do a lot of great things. So um, there's, I know uh, Tom Herman from Enfada, the Niagara Frontier Auto Dealers Association. He's got a lot of the auto dealerships um, that, that he works with constantly and there's so many different jobs in the auto dealership it's not just the salesman and the people turning wrenches there's managers there's business people there's so many different opportunities there so i'm really you know he's got a lot of great ideas i'm really looking forward to getting this relationship started um, anita troutman just joined the board she's the career and tech ed director over at bosey's she's got a lot of connections a lot of great ideas so I'm really looking forward to um, running with that. I participate in the Western New York NAF directors, so that's all the other NAF Academy directors from around the area, Lakeshore, Clarence, um, all those different schools. We meet uh, every month or two. Um, we have another meeting coming up. Um, and kind of tied to that is the Western New York NAF Regional Advisory Board. Um, another great thing. So. We will be getting in, I think about a week, they just cut a check. So one of the things that we identified with that board was that our job shadow opportunities this year are not very possible. But there's an awesome program called Virtual Job Shadow that has videos for a lot of those different opportunities. It's not the same, but it, it's, it's a good program. Um, and so that board is gonna be purchasing um, I think it's 500 seats. It was about a $15,000 investment, 
but and then those seats are going to be split up between the different academies throughout western new york so we'll get about 50 seats which is enough to cover our NAF academies uh, for the sophomores to do their job shadow experiences. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's been great working with that board. Um, you know, they do a lot for us. The West Seneca Chamber of Commerce, um, I've ran for a board seat the last two years and narrowly missed it both times, but still work with them quite a bit. Joe Kirschmeyer is awesome to work with. Uh, he does a lot for, for us, for our students. Uh, great partnerships and you know we continue to work with them a lot he um, a lot of our internship opportunities and things like that he sends it out to all the all the businesses in West Seneca so they've been a great partner and of course junior achievement uh, has been a partner of ours for a long time and we continue to do a lot of great things with them as well All right, career planning. So we started talking about this last spring. This is something Tracy Spagnola and I have uh, been working on quite a bit, uh, but another one of those things that got put on hold last spring when the pandemic hit. So um, Matt and I talked about this a little bit earlier. You can see that uh, Randolph County school system is on this right now we're gonna be redoing this um, we've been looking at a lot of different things right now at the high school level uh, we use Naviance for to get at some of this um, and there's a couple different programs but we've really been trying to find a more comprehensive uh, solution for looking at career planning and it's not necessarily for a kid to say in sixth grade that I'm gonna be an astrophysicist it's for them to start getting at you know what they like to do what they're interested in uh, what opportunities are available those kinds of things so um, I was at a conference in December and I there was a lot of it was a week-long conference there was a lot of breakout rooms and this one all of a sudden I was like holy cow that is everything that we've been look, looking for, and it's in Google. It's free. A lot of these other things, like virtual job shadow, for example, that's 30 to $40 a seat per student. This is free. So this is so slick. So Misty Wolf was the presenter at the conference, so I emailed her after the conference, and I was like, hey, you know, I've, I've been looking for years because, you know, even before I came here, uh, this is kind of what I did my dissertation on. You know, this has been a passion of mine for, for a while now. Um, so this is like everything we've been looking for. Um, and just to kind of give you a brief overview. So, so we need to go through this and, and make it ours and work with the counselors, you know, because they're going to be the ones that are be doing a lot of this work. So we want to make sure that it's not more work than there are than they need to do and be respectful of their time and things like that um, but we just got this a few weeks ago but i wanted to share it with you because it's so exciting so the student this would theoretically follow follow them through now uh misty wolf when we talked to her tracy and i met with her virtually a couple weeks ago um, she's down in north carolina um, and she shared this with me so their student name goes in here, all their basic stuff. But when you get into these tabs down here, there's different activities that they can do. So they go through here and they click on animals, anything that they like in here, and they fill out all these different sheets here. And what happens is as they go through these activities through here, it helps them find things that they're good at, what they like to do, uh, programs that might be available, and then some of the data actually auto-populates right back in to their main screen. So it, it, it's, it's so slick. Um, there's some programming that happens in the background, and Misty did warn me, you know, it's not perfect. So 
we've got to go through all that stuff and make sure before we do roll it out that, that everything's driving and everything's working great. But I did want to share it with you to, to kind of show you where we're at in the planning process. So they have a, a middle school plan and they also had a separate high school plan. I don't know if we'll look to do one plan to carry through or if we'll look to have separate plans. We're still in the planning phases, but it's very exciting and it's, and it, it's really going to help our school counselors have a, a have a a guide and our students you know i envision the students and the parents having access to this so this is a constant conversation of you know what are you thinking about what are you what are you going to do when you get older what are the programs in high school we've got all these awesome programs our academy programs our cte our ap our advanced studies we've got all of these awesome things that they can tap into in high school so this kind of gets everything on paper and helps guide the conversation when we're doing the scheduling. Um, I can go on for days and days about this, but when you say this gets everything on paper. That's actually not so on paper, right? Well, the digital. The reason I'm asking yep. is uh, again, I'm I'm a real I'm working really hard on finding ways to communicate past high school. Mm -hmm. Can you? Is this something that maybe might offer us that ability to then have them years later? Do this and see if it helped, didn't help. Oh, absolutely. Like, like, absolutely. You know, so it's not a piece of paper that's going to get lost. Maybe it's a way of having them revisit it after they've spent a couple of years mm -hmm. in the real world at college or technical school or working at a dealership. Um, you know, I'm really big on getting feedback from people after they've left high school. On, I think it can help focus things in high school for the current kids. So, I mean, I believe you mentioned Naviance also. But I think that already has capabilities built into it, does it not? I'm not super familiar with Naviance, to be to be okay. perfectly honest. But um, if you're working on this, can you keep that in the back of your absolutely. mind? Absolutely. But the so the kind of the goal is, it's almost like having an IEP for every student. Mm -hmm. You know, a, an in, individualized plan for every single student, nice. and and this gets at that. Um, there's some of the districts that we were talking to, you know, and, and these are people from around the country. You know, this is one of the big topics in CTE right now is this career planning. And um, a lot of the districts, they, they actually do an individual plan, and it's signed off on every year by the student and the parent and the counselor. And, you know, I, the, the conversation, they're having that conversation with those three people every single year, sometimes multiple times a year, which I think is phenomenal. You know, it, it brings everybody to the table, everybody's on the same page, you know, and, and it's, it's challenging to get it to the right platform. That's why, you know, like with, with a Google Doc, is it housed in the counselor's drive? Is it housed in the student's drive? Is it, you know, so that's some of the, the conversation that we have to have was where is this document gonna live? Is, is the student gonna keep it? But theoretically, they're gonna have access to this plan either way, so they can always make a copy of it whenever they want. But the challenge becomes then they get all these copies. So some of the logistics are, are things that we have to work out and we have to talk about. But, but absolutely, we want the student to be involved. We want the parent to be involved. And we want this to start shaping their future. And we want them to have this as, as they go through and as they leave us. You know, it, it can help them as they get into college and even beyond that. Okay. So the high school plan is, is very similar. Uh, for the sake of time, I will uh, head on. So middle schools, that's, a, that's another hot topic um, around the country is uh, middle school programming. So the state gave us some flexibility a couple of years ago, um, and they said it doesn't necessarily have to be a unit of tech and uh, 0.75 of family and consumer science. Now you can, it's 1.75 units of CTE which gives us some flexibility. Um, so I kind of envision not necessarily just the, the school counselors having some of those conversations and doing some of the career planning with the students, but being able to do that in some of our CTE classrooms, in our tech classrooms, in our facts classrooms. Once we figure out exactly um, what, what that career plan is gonna look like, they can do some of those activities right in the classroom with the kids. So that conversation and, and those thoughts are starting in the kids when they're in middle school 
and we can talk more about you know the programs that we have available because sometimes they only find out by chance you know the, because they they got a friend that's in there or their neighbors in there or whatever so the the goal is to take that chance out of it and make sure everybody knows what we have what they can do with it um, all of the awesome experiences and um, a lot of the research around the career planning actually shows as you know in talking to misty down in north carolina the research that they did was as the students are doing this career planning they become more engaged they're getting into things that they want to be in going back to the conversations that we were having earlier they want to be involved they're in stuff that they're interested in they're not just sitting in classes that they get put into they're active in the process of planning those classes and then that makes them more engaged and makes them more successful. So that's kind of the, the goal there, um, to hopefully have that ready to up and rock and roll for next year. Um, so uh, capstone experience is another thing that I've been working on with Mrs. Persico, Mrs. Logren, the, the, and the middle school folks. Uh, we had to put that on hold this year with everything going on, but looking forward to getting that rolling next year. A lot of great things there. Um, we've been meeting with the uh, focus group through BOCES for that. A lot of great people in that group, a lot of great ideas, a lot of support there, so it's been great. Again, career planning um, to make them aware of the, th the things that are going on. We talked about um, the improvement and then you know just continuous improvement of the programs. So I, in these conferences that I've been going to, trying to pay attention to what others are doing at the middle school level. A lot of them are doing these individual uh, education plans for every student. So that's kind of been a lot of the focus on in the middle school CTE program. So more to come on that. You know, I just wanted you to know that's on my on my radar and, you know, continuing to explore options there and, and make adjustments. Scholarships. Um, we got a couple more scholarships last year. Um, so we had, I think, this past year we had about 5,500. The year before we had about 4,000. So I've been trying to work with our, with our advisory board and with our partners to get more scholarships for our students. And they've been very generous. And, and uh, so that's another thing that we've been trying to work on increasing for our students a little bit. Internships. As I mentioned earlier, internships have, have been a challenge this year um, since the pandemic. Um, we do have some students out in person right now. Uh, some, some families aren't at that comfort level yet, which is fine. So we've been trying to provide them with some virtual options. Um, you know, you can see the, the Academy of Business and Finance. Now, some of these students just haven't given me their stuff yet, so I've been hounding them. Um, I've sent out a lot of communications. In the spring, I sent out two reminds. Uh, over the summer, in July, we sent a letter uh, informing them how many hours they had, where they were at. We sent another letter in January, which has sparked quite a few phone calls to my <laughs> office, if you can imagine that. Um, but we've been sending out continuous emails. We've got the Google Classroom going. We're really trying to get at this the best we can. Um, so I, I plan to have a conversation with Matt, uh, Mr. Bystrack, in the next week or two, um, just to, you know, get a better handle on it. I, I've been getting a lot of feedback since my last letter. You know, a lot of students have been uh, either sending me in hours or talking to me, and we're coming up with a plan for them to get their hours. So um, we do have some flexibility around this from the state. They've already given that flexibility. <laughs> But the most important part is the, the experience around this for the students, um, because in my opinion, it's, it's our best experience that the academy students have. Um, so we, we're working as hard as we can to make sure that they complete this experience um, and trying to provide multiple opportunities through various modalities for them to complete this. Uh, real quick, so obviously high school information night and academy night looked a little bit different this year. Um, I'll take you 
real quickly there. I'm sure most of you have probably seen this. So um, we were, what we did, obviously we couldn't do our in-person event. So how we got at was uh, we made a, a video for each department uh, on the website with all the courses, especially, you know, the focus is on ninth grade courses. So the eighth graders know what's available in ninth grade. So we were able to put these videos up. And then we also had uh, Google Meet question and answer sessions for each side of town. Um, not participation, attendance wasn't too terrible. We had a, about 30 to 40 students at each session. So I, I felt it was pretty good. We were able to answer a lot of questions. Um, I left my information there for, for people to reach out if they had more questions. Uh, but that's how we made these um, events happen this year. The Academy website. So this has been another one of my priorities. The, so there's technically really three different Academy websites. There's the District Academy website, and then there's one on each high school page. They all look very different, and they all have different information. So I've been working on getting a, a consistent message, revamping, making sure the information is correct, accurate. Um, so that's, that's been something I've been working on as well. Still have more work to do around that, um, but especially with doing the events this way, it's given me the opportunity to get in there and start making some changes. So more to come, more changes to come, but we did the same thing for Academy Night. Uh, we, we had each Academy create a video with all of the information, talked about the courses they offer, the internships, some of the special things that they're able to do throughout. Uh, we also li linked the curriculum handbook in here so that they could see all the different courses, some of the advanced studies courses, um, and those things in here as well. And then um, our academy application was digital this year. So instead of having the paper version, with the teacher recommendations that sometimes get lost lost in the shuffle, we have the uh, digital academy application um, that students have been filling out. So, part of the uh, Perkins grant is doing a post graduation survey. So as I said, I, I worked with uh, the folks in the Actia group and um, we, I, I took pieces from each of their surveys to make sure that we were able to answer all of the questions that the state wanted, but also added some of our own questions in here. I'm gonna skip right to the responses. We just sent this out, I think it was last week. Um, we sent it to our graduates from last year from the Academy of IT Digital Media and the Academy of Business and Finance. So um, that's about 35, 40 students. We've got eight responses so far. So typically what BOCES does, because they get the Perkins grant, so they, they do this as well, is they send out the initial one. Actually, a lot of them use a system called Qualtrics, which is somewhat expensive. Um, so I thought the Google form was a lot more cost efficient because it's free. Um, but they, um, we were able to get a lot of information from this survey, um, even from just these eight responses. So it, it's amazing how convenient the information is that comes back. They tell me which uh, high school they were at, which academy program they were at. So it looks right now most of our responses are from well all of them are going to be from those two academies because we only sent it to those two academies next year i will send it to all five uh, or maybe later this year but last year at the end of the year we knew we wanted to focus on our state approved programs because that's who the pro uh, perkins grant focuses on so when we were collecting their email addresses at the end of last year to administer this survey, we only collected those two. So at the end of this year, we'll collect uh, email addresses from all five groups. So it uh, does their gender, race, ethnicity, um, their employment status, whether they're employed full-time, military, part-time, and then which institutions that they're going to, which is great because, hey, 
we've got partnerships at some of these, but we need more partnerships at some of the other ones where our kids are going. So it helps us get at some of that data. Um, tells us our ma their majors, what are they going for? You know, make sure that our programs are aligning to, to what their interests are. Is there, I don't mean to interrupt, is there, if you go back up, is there a spot where, say they're not attending a university trade school, like if they went right into a career to work for? Yep. Is there, I yep. just didn't, couldn't read So, it. yeah, a couple of these are, are school related, and then we'll get to the employment related. Okay. Um, so if you are a student, how many credits were you able to transfer from high school? So here's a good one right here. Look at 57% of our kids were able to transfer more than 12 credits. That's a semester. So 57% of our respondents, now granted, it's eight respondents. But still, um, the, the info that we're going to be able to get back from this is, is very huge. Um, if employed, who is your employer? Aldi, Target, Wegmans, Wegmans Food Markets. So we're working at Wegmans. Uh, but again, these guys are only six months out from school, so we wouldn't really expect them to be in full-blown careers yet. If employed, what is your current position? So we can see what they're doing. What are your duties and responsibilities? Did your high school preparation help you obtain your present job? 80% somewhat and 20% no. If employed, is the job related to your academy program? Not related to high school courses, looks like most of them somewhat related. Again, you know, they're so closely removed that it's not always going to be the case where it's directly related. Uh, do you own or operate a small business? Um, it looks like at least one respondent has their own business going already. Well, that's, that's, awesome. that's not too bad. Let's find out about it and let's report it. Yep. Uh, if you are unemployed and not looking for work, please indicate the reason so we can kind of see what's going on there. When did you decide on your career selection? So this kind of helps us look at, you know, are they deciding on a career in middle school, high school, after graduation, still working on a decision? You know, so these, these respondents, almost half, are telling me we got to do a better job of, you know, helping them get to a career with what they want to do when they get older yeah, sometimes it helps them know not what they don't want to do it's not always yeah absolutely i mean you don't necessarily need to have a career chosen but you can know what, what you, you don't, want, you to don't do. want to do and, and i have that conversation all the time that's the beauty of the internships yeah. Yeah. sometimes you go on an internship you go to a vet's office and they're doing a surgery and uh, oh never mind <laughs> i don't want to be a veterinarian which it's great to do it in high school rather than after you spend $100,000 on college. Just think about that for the parents to spend the money for the college and Absolutely. find out they're switching. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, what were the major influencing factors of your career post-secondary educational choice? So who's, who's helping shape these opportunities? Employment, friends, families, mentors, high school people. Um, how can we improve our academy programs? I'm going to skip that. I haven't looked at those yet to so make sure they're good. No. Uh, but, you know... It's a it's a good way for them to give me some feedback and you know see see what we can do better. Now, are you planning on sending this to these students every year or maybe in four years after college to see? I haven't decided yet. Mm -hmm. I haven't like decided. Informational to find yep. out. You know, Absolutely. If they went for but the that they were I do have a hook here. We'll get there in one okay. second. Uh, were there any courses or majors that you were interested in but they were not offered? Very important for us to make sure that we are um, programming accordingly, and, and I'm happy to see a, a few no's in here. You know, which means tells me that we're we're doing okay. Um, then we go and we get their updated contact information, so we can contact them later and keep them in the loop. Would you like to stay involved in our academy program? So we send out to our advisory board um, an engagement sheet that they get to kind of choose the activities that they want to be involved in. So same opportunity for our graduates. A lot of our advisory board members are graduates. So this gives them an opportunity to stay involved uh, and keep them involved and, and you know, keep feeding our program. So, I was very excited to get this survey out. Um, I know we have some room to grow here, but uh, the data that we're going to get from it is, is huge and, and uh, very important 
to the growth of our program. So very excited to, about that survey and, and yeah, to keep awesome. that going in the future. Conferences. Um, so in the spring, I was actually in New York City, the epicenter of COVID as it started. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. I, I had a phone conversation with Matt the day I got there. Hey, Matt, should I be coming home? <laughs> so uh, yeah, very interesting. And um, it was an interesting conference because a lot of people ended up not coming or going home early. Um, but it was a very valuable one either way. Um, I also did the NAF Summer Institute uh, virtually July 13th and 14th. Um, that was supposed to be in Orlando, but uh, we did it virtually. Renee Day and myself were able to attend that. A lot of great ideas came out of that conference. And then these two conferences in the fall, uh, CTE is Essential, that was put on the CTE Technical Assistance Center of New York in November 18th and 19th. Um, that conference was awesome because I got a lot, a lot of ideas on internships and things like that. And then the Career Tech Vision 2020 was phenomenal, was phenomenal. So that was a national conference uh, with people from all over the country. And that's where I met Misty Wolf, uh, who helped us out with the career plan and got some of the other middle school ideas and um, you know some of the other programming ideas. I haven't even been able to decompress from that conference yet. If you look at my desktop right now, because you could go back in after the conference and uh, get some of the notes and things like that. So my desktop is just covered with things. Um, you know, and, and it ranges from ideas for our middle school programs and career planning and things like that. So um, these conferences are, are really helpful in finding ideas, seeing what other people are doing, bouncing your ideas, creating partnerships. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I thank you for the opportunity to attend these things because they are very important uh, for our programs and to, to help us continuously improve. So thank you for your support on, on these conferences. Work with the elementary schools, unfortunately, uh, we weren't able to do our hour of code in person this year. Um, last year, I know we had talked about it uh, when we met last January, but we were able to do the hour of code at all five elementary schools last year. So next year, as things open back up, um, we will continue on that. I've got a little link here. Uh, Tori Jones, our tech integrator for our elementary schools, actually sent me this. So um, last year, I was able to use some of our curriculum cabinet funds. I, you know, I, I talked to him, and I said, hey, how can I support you in your work? Um, so we were able to get him some Ozobots. We got him a classroom set of Ozobots for him to use in his work. So he's been able to, to uh, put them to use and to start these kids off and getting them doing some coding. Um, so, you know, with the Ozobots, uh, they follow a color code. So it's basic introductory principles at that level, um, which is very important. You know, we have the uh, computer science and digital fluency standards, which were just passed by the state. I just was uh, in a conference and a deep dive for that earlier. Uh, so this can help make sure that we're meeting those standards but just trying to support him in his work at the elementary level. Um, we've done some collaboration on a few different things. Um, you know, he's, he, my opinion, he's doing an outstanding job at supporting the elementary schools, and uh, I've just been trying to, to, to support him in his work and make sure he has the tools he needs. And, uh, you know, trying to, you know, again, help them identify things that they're passionate about, help them identify different careers, you know, all those different things um, down even at the elementary level, getting them different experiences so they can um, develop all of these things. NAF, we have um, our two NAF academies, Academy of IT Digital Media and Business and Finance. We were again distinguished this year. We were able to roll over from last year. Academy enrollment. Um, so as of when I put this slide on here, which I think was maybe Friday, we had 67 applicants. When I looked earlier today, we had 77. So the application doesn't technically close until Friday, or no, sorry, Saturday. Uh, but 
we we continue it's been a tough year for this as well um you know even with our our cohort last year we had you know probably 10 12 students that called me after after march and said hey you know we we can't do one more thing you know with everything going on so uh, we do have some students that choose not to continue on in the academy, and usually when they come to me, um, they usually go to their counselor first, and then their counselor sends them to me, and then I have a conversation with a student, and I have a conversation with the parent and the counselor, and we talk it out. You know, sometimes it'll be um, like a senior in, in the business and finance academy that says, "Oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be a banker," and then we'll have a conversation, and I'll say, "Well, you know." you don't necessarily have to be a banker there's at dealerships there's there's business people they're they're everywhere and it, it changes the narrative you know and it makes them think sometimes they still decide to, to leave the academy which you know for me whatever is the best thing for that student when working with myself the counselor and the parents and the student that's where they're going to go sometimes they choose to stay sometimes they choose to go but it's having that conversation exploring their options, seeing, seeing what's gonna be the best thing for them. Um, so it's been a challenging year with enrollment. Um, you know, I won't sugarcoat that. We still have some time left. I just talked to some of the academy teachers earlier. They said, hey, can you leave the application open till second semester, because we're gonna get new kids? Absolutely, so we're gonna be working on that. I'm gonna send out another school messenger to families. Um, you know, every day we get about another 10 applications, so it's still growing. And mind you, it's only been open since Academy Night, which was uh, January 13th. So it's only been open for a week and a half. So I expect that number to grow, to, to um, keep, keep going. But with the academies um, and scheduling, like Mr. Brinker and Mr. Winnicky said, we are always scheduling, we're always working. So we work within our departments. You know, we don't, if, if we've got 20 kids, we don't run two sections. Sometimes we can run, like for, for visual arts, for example, that's become a popular academy. We can run it on both sides of town. But if the numbers end up being smaller, then we'll run one section of it instead of two sections. So we're constantly having those conversations, taking a look, making sure that we're being efficient. Nothing's hidden. You know, and we work together constantly. We're constantly on the phone over the summer. We work together uh, to maximize what we're able to offer academy-wise and what we're able to offer to non-academy students as well. BOCES enrollment, that's, uh, that's the big jump. So uh, CTE, we went from 64 last year to 124 this year, um, which is a huge jump. So thank you for your support on that. Um, and, and that's going to grow even more next year. So that, that, that's a big junior class. Those juniors are going to be seniors next year. And we'll probably have another big uh, junior class this upcoming year. So I, I expect to see some more numbers there um, next year. Those seats, yes, they are expensive, but they are aidable. So we do get some of that back. Um, but, you know, those, those experiences are experiences that we can't provide them. You know, and, and they're very valuable. So um, we work a lot with students. We make sure that the right students are going to the program. We make sure if that's what they want, that they're in school. Um, I, I work with Mr. Vogel over at Potter Road. I talk to him probably once or twice a week. And we're constantly making sure that our kids are good. Um, we don't get the final bill for these students until January. So we do have some time that if they're not meeting the mark and they're not doing what they need to do, then they don't stay in that program. And we need to reconfigure their schedule and get them somewhere else where they're gonna be more successful and make their schedule more manageable for them. Um, P-TECH, so we are now, we now have three cohorts of P-TECH instead of two. So we were able to bring on seven students there. Um, last year, uh, Erie One Boses told us that however many seats that we committed to for PTEC, we had to pay for. So we had committed to 10 seats. And so last year, I worked with the two counselors at the middle schools, uh, East and West, and the two counselors at the high schools and said, all right, let's, let's look at our numbers, look at our interests. What is our best guess of how many students we can put in there? So we came up with two for East and three for West. So we said, we'll commit to five seats because it's $20,000 a seat. Now that's grant funded. 
So, you know, most of those seats are paid for by the grant, but the ones that we weren't going to fill, we would have had to pay for. So being fiscally responsible, we said, all right, best guess in, in working with everybody, we can fill five seats. Last year, we put seven students in there. So we had more applicants than we had seats, but we were able to work with Erie One and get those other two students in there. But uh, we also saved those other three seats, so we, you know, we didn't have to pay those 60 grand for seats that weren't filled. So it, it's a balance, and, and, and it's working with uh, Luke Vogel over there and um, Anita Troutman and the folks over there, uh, great partnerships over there. Um, and making sure that we're, we're being efficient and fiscally responsible. And then also our occupation education program. Um, last year we had seven seats, this year we have nine. That kind of varies based on you know, the, the, student, the students that uh, would benefit from that program. So the occupational education program, that's a, a modified CTE program. It's more accessible for some students that might not be able to succeed in a traditional CTE program. Um, you know the CTE programs over there. They're very rigorous and you know it, they are they are no joke um, You know, and that's why the Board of Regents really said and and the other thing um, That I, I didn't hit on is those 124 seats that increase is Not only helping the students and having the programs and I get feedback. I know the question came earlier You know are the families happy with that? Yes all the time the families are you know, awesome feedback. I haven't heard one bad thing about that. So, you know, thank you for making that accessible for our students. Um, but those students, most of them also get the technical endorsement, which, you know, as a side benefit, we're always students first and, and what's best for them. But as a side benefit, it helps us with our accountability as well. Um, so now the state recognizes the technical endorsement the same as a, as a diploma with an advanced studies. So on our accountability, we get two points for those students, just like the advanced study students. So it, it also um, helps increase our accountability score. Um, so not only those students that are at BOCES and those approved programs, but our three approved programs as well, they get the technical endorsement if they complete all the requirements. So uh, we should see a significant gain in our accountability score not only this year but next year when we get that next cohort of students in there so um, just a point of clarification uh, yep is this cohort or is this total program that's total program total right program. there correct okay. yep so the p -Tech 1920 was the first year second second year second so that's so two cohorts the third year and then there's three cohorts okay. in there CTE, there, there's two cohorts because they're two-year programs, so that's juniors and seniors, yeah, correct. I, your numbers that you were talking about, like I was trying to do the quick math on yep. it. So that's, okay, yeah. I got it. So yep. next year it'll increase again if we get seven or five, whatever a lot. Yeah, I would, I would probably anticipate CTE will probably go up to, you know, 175 or so, mm -hmm. and PTEC will probably be somewhere around 30, just under 30, sure. I would expect. And OE will probably stay about the same. It's a five-year program. Correct. Yeah, so it came home in our eighth grade report card. Yep. It was packaged in there. Yep. And that's, you know, again, the collaboration and the working across town. I had had a conversation with Mr. Lairs over at uh, West Middle because uh, somebody had asked me about the program. So I, I called him. You know, I looked at the kid's schedule. I called Mr. Lairs. I said, hey, one of your kids is looking at this. I want to make sure... I'm providing him the right information. Um, so we had that quick conversation, which led to him emailing me, hey, Dr. Merkel, uh, we're sending a report card home, and we got that P-Tech night coming up. Should we include some information? So I put together a letter. We sent home the flyer. So you know, it's, it's that collaboration and, and trying to get all those opportunities out there. You know, it's, it's working with this group of people is, is awesome. You know, we, we work very well. We're always thinking together about each other. You know, it's not just an east-west, you know, it, we're thinking about the kids comprehensively and bringing them every opportunity that we possibly can. Uh, CDOS planning, this is uh, another program that we've been working on uh, with Mrs. Prosecco, Mrs. Fowler, the high schools, um, just trying to uh, expand our programming to the students and make sure that we're giving them every opportunity that we can 
We're still in the planning phase of this. Um, some of it's going to be determined by our course requests, which we'll have uh, after the counselors work with the students. Some of it's going to be determined by um, whether we, uh, if they do the regents exams or not, um, because some of the students might not benefit from this program as much if they do those exemptions. So uh, a lot of planning, uh, we've gone to uh, we've talked to people from Kenton, Lancaster, Erie One Boses, Erie Two Boses, to look at um, all the different programs that are out there, and um, we, we've got a pretty good grasp on what we want. But we really need to focus on. We've put together lists from both East Senior and West Senior, and even the middle schools. We we had had some conversation of the students that could benefit from this program, to try to design the program to best meet the needs of those students. So. We're still in the planning phases of that, uh, but again, wanted to put it on your radar and let you know uh, what we got going on. Equipment, so when I did my budget last year, um, it, it was important for me to uh, get at some of our equipment. As, as it was mentioned earlier, uh, some of our equipment is very, very old. Um, so I was able to put some an equipment line in my budget but I repurposed some other funds so they didn't increase my budget. Just, you know, kind of reappropriate re things, but to put a priority on equipment. So uh, the picture of the table saw down there, do I get a laser here? Uh, on the lower left, I don't have a laser. Uh, we just got a, a table saw for East Senior. Now that saw stopped there, so their saw was much older than I am. Um, I'm not quite sure how old it was, but it, it's very aged. This saw stop has a cartridge in it that senses moisture. And if it senses moisture, it's a brake cartridge. So it stops that blade almost like within milliseconds. So it gives us a, a lot of safety in our equipment. So um, it, it's helped us increase our safety. On the right, um, Mr. Brinker and I actually today put together two of those dust collectors. So the dust collection systems on both sides of town are antiquated, they're getting old. I got a quote on those and um, $100,000 each for each side of town. So I said, I don't think we're doing that just now. So uh, we were able to get some of these smaller units while we're trying to get that equipment repaired uh, to get the big equipment up. Um, the x carve CNCs, so we already had two of these. Uh, we had one at East Middle and we had one at East Senior. So last year with the curriculum cabinet, we were able to put one at West Senior and we were able to put one at West Middle. So now we have four of the same machines at the four secondary buildings, which is very nice because when you have all the same equipment, it makes uh, professional development easier. You're all working with the same things. Um, so I had planned, uh, for those of you that aren't aware, that's my background is machining. I had planned on doing a teacher center course for them last summer. Obviously we had to scrub it because we couldn't do it in person and I didn't think we could do that justice uh, virtually. So I will plan to do that in the future, but it's nice to have all of the same equipment. It's modern equipment, doing what they're doing in, in industry now. They're learning you know, the modern techniques um, and, and able to do a lot of cool things. So uh, we'll actually be purchasing a couple more of these um, so that more students have more opportunities. You know, it takes a while to run the program on there. If you only have one, it takes a long time to get a class of students through. So we're, we're gonna be purchasing a couple more of these. But again, it's nice having the same equipment because on the parts side of things too, all your parts are consistent. So if you have extra parts, then you know it's the same extra parts for all the equipment. You don't have to buy six sets of extra parts. So um, you know, I again thank you for your support on on my budget and um, you know allowing us to do all of these things. So for the remainder of this year, uh, tomorrow night we're going to be doing engineering mid-year critiques where we have about 10 engineers from the field that will be joining us virtually um, and giving the students feedback on their engineering projects. Uh, they also join us at the end of the year for our engineering fair. 
Um, our, we'll have our advisory board meetings for our academies. We'll have two more meetings, one in February, one in May. Our engineering fair at the end of the year. Uh, we'll see where we're at with things, whether that be live in person or virtual. Um, same thing with our portfolio adjudication. Students of Excellence is currently scheduled, I believe it's April 21st. We're looking at possibly moving that back four to six weeks, we'll, which will give us some more options as things um, open up. Um, I've heard some different options. I've heard uh, maybe outdoor dining, you can have more people if they're spread out. I don't think we're doing that in April, but maybe we can do it in June. So moving it back a little bit is gonna allow us to have more options. So I'm gonna work with both of the principals to find a, a date that works for both of them to hold that ceremony. And then um, our academy graduations, hopefully we can do in person, but uh, we'll, you know, we've, we've had a lot of ideas around that, you know, using the new stadiums possibly, if we can't do something indoors, maybe something outdoors where we can spread people out and uh, honor, honor those graduates with the honors that are due. I think that's it. Questions? You've nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's right. mic drop. Yeah. No, don't drop no. The mic. No, don't that man will come out from behind no. the curtain and. <laughs> yes, he will. All right. Will. Thank you very much. It was Thank a pleasure you. seeing everybody tonight, Thank you so and much. Uh, Thank appreciate you. the opportunity to, to you, present Eric. to you tonight. It was Thank great. You very a lot much. of information. Okay. Thank you. A lot of great information. Yeah. We thank everybody yeah. for thank coming, you everyone for being here. Um, spending the evening with us. So principals. it's been great. And uh, have a good evening. Bye. And thank you so much. Yeah, a lot of good information. Okay, um, we were going to discuss board goals. Do we want to put that off till our next meeting? Or do we still want to do it? It's nine, almost 9 o'clock. And we have, we're going to go into executive also. So. I think maybe we should I yeah, put, them I off. Agree. put them off till the next meeting. I think we yeah. have a lot of good notes from some of the presentations. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Need some thinking. Okay. Uh, what do we want to do about the hiring policy? Oh. Do we want to? I'll make a motion to approve it. I'll well, second it. So we, I think the plan, we were going to have some conversation though. I thought that was the, oh. was, we'd have some conversation. About I it. did I know not that. know that. Yeah. Doc, Dr. Savoni was just going to talk a little bit about some of our current practices and how we might meld in with that, that policy. I think that was some of the, the idea that we wanted to discuss that. Okay, do we want to hold off on that for next time. Another, the next meeting in two weeks, or what do we want to do? We're good to talk about it, right? Yeah. Whatever you want to do. Yeah, yeah. I'm good to talk yeah, about it. I will tell you that okay. um, I, I kind of looked at some of that stuff, too. At least we did have some conversation, Larry and Diane and I, um, and, and just so you know, uh, um, there's, there's a lot that we can talk about, about each of the different levels in our hiring pro processes and protocols. Uh, and also I've been uh, working with, uh, over these past, well, really since the fall, but even more so, we, we have a lot of individual documents. And, and put, working with some of our local BOCES attorneys, a uh, gentleman from UB, Mr. Brinker actually, uh, from the administrative group as well, pulling together our documents and putting together a handbook. So I was going to share with you a little bit about when we have time and maybe tonight's not today, but share a little bit about how we go about our processes for like our, our civil service, our administration, and uh, you know our teachers. Uh, but my hope is is to share with you kind of like a packet and procedures as far as you know how we go about that process in the district and put together a document that our administrators, our teachers, et cetera, can use and have that kind of brings all these individual things and processes that we've had over the years together. So, um, and I don't know if, if anyone here has a specific interest in that or like to be part of that, I'd be happy to, you know, and if people are interested in, in, in doing a little slice group or something on that. Um, so, you know, we can, I understand maybe people are exhausted today, but I'm willing and open to talk about that, but just wanted to share that and get into that, you know, whatever. So would that impact what we have proposed for this hiring policy? <clears throat> I will say it will only because I think I would at least suggest that we, there are some specific procedures and processes about how we hire at each level 
some are linked contractually, some are not, that I would just challenge that you consider and, and, and hear and learn about before. I, I think there would be some implications to, I think, what was originally presented that would have some significant impact. So I would, I would ask that, you know, give an opportunity to hear and go through that um, and, and digest that before. That would be my recommendation. So can I ask the question then, because the motion was made and we're actually on the question now. Um, mm -hmm. Is it about the number of people or the groups of people that would sit in each interview? Uh, well, I know initially there was some interest for board members to be part of the interview process. And I, I think that that, that makes sense. Uh, we've actually we got one going on right now, but um, mm -hmm. and and that's fine. I, you know. Well, for years well, we did that. Yes, so, absolutely. Yes. I mean, I, I interviewed with board members along the way when I, when huh. I came into the district years huh. years ago. Uh, I I would say that there are some items in here. I think a lot of this makes sense, and we already do. But I would say some things in there and the way it's structured would be, I think we should have some further conversation and go through them before uh, I think you would approve them or implement them. Only because in our school system, and depending on when you hire a teacher and what type, I mean, I could go through a variety of examples. For example, if you want to hire a special ed teacher, you know, that, that teaches math and also teaches science. Uh, there are a variety of stakeholders that might be involved in that process that you may want a teacher aide that works in there. You may want the special ed department chair. You might want a math teacher that they're going to go teach with. You might also want a science teacher. You might have a special education uh, or a principal or assistant principal that is involved specifically. You heard Mr. Brinker talk about with that department. Sometimes there's district directors that have to be involved in that. The building principal. We have teacher leaders, teacher department chairs, uh, teacher facilitators that are involved at each level. So. There is a lot of nuances and intricacies with the different positions. And I, you know, every time we have an open position, we will go through and vet and determine stakeholders. And each position is often unique. A uh, different position, maybe at the other spectrum, is you might have a teacher aide. And sometimes it's a new position to the district, a teacher aide and could be working in, let's say, a 1211. And you may want, they work collaboratively with another aide or another teacher, et cetera, a different principal. Or you could have someone that is a part-time cleaner that may have no interaction with students. They work the night shift, they're not interacting. So there's a lot of pieces in there. And I, I just think, just to be mindful of how we develop and you know speak to that can have some implications. And you know, a lot of it makes a lot of sense and a lot of it's what's already done. Um, if anything, I would say, at least this conversation and kind of asking like, hey, what are hiring, hiring processes and protocols? I mean, I've been here, I don't know, 16, 17 years, and you know, we have had some pretty successful processes that really haven't, you know, that, that are very, that are unique sometimes in position, but all have common structure and procedures in them, whether it's a teacher, whether it's an administrator, an assistant principal. You know, assistant principal is different than a district director. You know, assistant principal or principal are supporting an entire building, my principal interview, I had like 25 people on it. You know, my assistant principal was a little bit smaller. It had different levels and ranges. So different than maybe a director of special ed and the, and the stakeholders that that person might be. And when parents are, should be involved, students should be involved, you know, et cetera. So, you know, I just I just share that with you just from my experiences. And if anything, this kind of kind of having this conversation come up um, is in, in, in reviewing the documents that are in the district and, you know, whether it's telephone references or screening procedures or how they go about creating or requesting to create a position or fill a position and all that pieces of recommendations, realize that, you know what, it may make sense to have, you know, things together maybe. How can we grow and get better and maybe have a, cons you know, a concise and consistent practice that is documented that people can point to and, and research. So, yeah, I, I think that's been good, just me analyzing the department, so that's kind of what I've been putting together and kind of making it in a complete package. So, I mean, I something that I'd like to share, I mean, obviously the, the board has a right to, to do you know, as they wish, but I would just, you know, I would just suggest that there's, there's more, there's much more in depth to some of our processes, and I think, you know, we should reflect on those, or I would challenge you to reflect and talk about, and let's work through those a little bit. Um, because I, you know, that's just my opinion. 
Yeah, I, I would just say just one of the primary functions, honestly, of the district is to, you know, for you know, for John and myself is to hire, but uh, just some of the things outlined in the policy, just, you know, really to talk about having, you know, board members at all levels of interviews or having to coordinate around that, just that that, that could become very problematic. And I, I realize that you wouldn't have to necessarily be a part of every interview if you didn't want to, but if somebody could become problematic if we start picking or choosing and saying, well, we're not going to be in this one, but we want representation in that one. There's a lot of hiring that goes on on a regular basis, too, and I would think for the most part we do a pretty decent job, but that's what I, I guess the conversation that you know, we were having would be to say, you know, this is that's pretty lofty. I just I would say some of the things suggested in the policy, um, you know, if it's a part-time cleaner, uh, if it's a teacher aide, if it's a teacher, if it's an administrator, you know, I, I think we just want to be careful, you know, how much we say that we're going to, okay, we want somebody, a couple of board members as a part of every interview committee, but then, you know, if you have the option to sort of say, well, we don't want to be part of this one, but we do want to be a part of that one, someone could start to ask questions, you know, why too, and I think that could be problematic as well. Um, I, I don't know if that makes sense, but just looking at the policy was very prescribed, um, and I just, I think that's good, but I think it's a good starting point, especially when you're talking about your administrative hires, but I think, you know, that just it's, there, there's, there's quite a bit of hiring that, that takes place in the district on a regular basis, filling positions and whatnot, so I just, that's the one thing I guess I would say would be important to, consider before we put something down and say this is going to be our policy moving forward that we at least maybe have some conversation you know with the people that are closest to the action on that so some of it's almost in, in what was least presented and some of it is 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 more restrictive than others and some of it is, is more open than others i think i just think there are different like a lot of our CSCA hires are based on uh, off of our contractual processes and how that is done, uh, and it's used similar to our transfer process. Some of our teachers, and depending on what the teacher is doing, could involve the different stakeholders and certainly the administration and central administration. There's also groups on here that aren't even discussed. Our supervisors and directors groups, our managerial confidential group, uh, there are different pieces that I don't think are encompassed within this, so I just, that's all, and, and if, if it's if it's individuals that have a, maybe a greater interest, I think it's a good conversation, and I always can look at how do we make sure that we are consistent and improving to get the best people. It's one of the most important things, if not the most important things that our teachers and administrators and our staff members have to do, um, because in man, many many times these positions are a 20 to 30 year commitment. So we want to get it right. So I just, that would be all I would say is there are some pieces maybe that would require some more attention. There are pieces that are completely fine, and I just I would I would suggest that it requires more discussion in and around it. Um, and, and just looking at Williamsville, Medina, Kenton, Hamburg, and looking at being able to pull and look at some of these different things and see how are these structures, what are the processes, and talking to some of our human resource department <coughs> at BOCES, and even like I said, uh, having a meeting coming up with just University of Buffalo professor that's worked with us in the past on different hiring protocols and screening tips and things. Um, uh, it is, uh, those are some of the things that are happening. And, and how does it relate to our administrators that often drive a lot of our, you know, that's, that's a huge function of their work. It is, is hiring depending on certain levels. Uh, and, and even our teacher and our union leaders across, not just CSEA and our teachers and our administrators, but also our supervisor and directors and those groups and our manager, account, like all, how all those pieces work. That's all, and that's all I wanted to say. And if, you know, if I'm happy to kind of meet with people or share or, or, or do some of those things, and and then maybe come back and revisit it. But, well, do you have anything that the board can look at? Yeah, that's what I'm suggesting. I, to me, Peter, I, we have a variety of different things, and, and I can share some stuff with you or, or send it out. But I, I like the idea, and I've seen some examples of you know, full packets of information that kind of goes through a process, talks about some of the procedures and protocols, et cetera, talks about committee structure, what type of questions are developed. We've had some of those things in our district, but I don't know if it's ever been packaged in a way you can say, hey, here's everything. <coughs> so that's what, and I think when it was first asked the question, those are some of the things that, that, I, that I've actually been working on to try to do, just so we, we, you have that, and I think we have it as a district. Well, I think what's happened with the group is that we've, this has been sitting there for at least two months. At least two, at least two months. Yeah. So um, getting to the bottom of where we want to be with this, and as firsthand, Diane and myself had the chance to be on the uh, recent hiring, um, and it's, it's the higher level, so obviously where we're at with that, it's, it's honestly for the bottom, 
of where we're going to look at with the units. Um, I guess the, the language that you feel that is this coming from lawyers or is this coming from where are we getting our guidance on um, the language at, that we're struggling with? At the, the language of what was? What was presented to which would now be? I, don't, I, don't, I would argue just some of it doesn't take into account the different nuances of the variety of positions. So, you know, I will tell you that, and I just, I don't know, I guess no one's ever said to me, here's where we believe that there is a concern or we need further guidance in the first place to, to even start the conversation. So I, you know, I, I, and that's fine. I, I just, so those are some of the things I think it really would require, if you, Peter, if you have an interest in this or whoever, I mean, I'm happy, I just think we need to actually have some time when we go through and I can share and talk about and bring in and put, some of it has contractual stuff, a lot of it is district driven and what our leaders and how we can structure, but yeah, you are right. I'm glad you got to sit in, in some of this thing and just see the beginning, at least first half of kind of some screening and what are some of the processes that, that we do, but how does that look and how does that impact when, you know, Joe Farr has a groundskeeper position that has to go open and what is our process for doing that and who is involved in that process and how does the transfer post where, you know, all of those are nuances. And I don't know if each one of these got at that. So I know we initially talked about it and then I thought, I started doing work on it and then I thought it was being proposed again, and that's when I kind of just reached out and just said, hey, you know, we might want to talk about this because there's going to be some significant implications that will go across the district. Well, when, when you look at what the Board of Education is and what we do when we look at things, um, we kind of want to be able to, I mean, this is a living document, so it could change. And I don't think we're really doing anything, I don't feel, um, to hurt anybody or to finagle anything. I think it's just to have uh, answers, um, being able to watch, see, understand. I think a lot of times what happens is we don't get a lot until after the fact. So being on the ground floor for us now um, is very enlightening because now we can carry that message. So I don't think that there's really a part that would be stopping us from implementing this and change it as we go along I mean that that's that's how I feel about it uh, I think if we just keep kicking well what happened this what happened this what happened this and then we get to the point where nothing ever gets done yeah I would just look at I mean, a policy really isn't a living document though a policy is something that has to be changed anytime you, you want to make a change so that's that's all I mean and I was just I guess looking at it from the standpoint of if we were going to have something that you know that was you know a critical function of the district here that we just maybe have you know I know I know that, that there, there's some work and I, I, I don't know exactly with the nature of it but everybody you know it's the board had gotten together and developed this policy but I just thought it'd be good to have some conversation with the people that really have to our chart that they have been implementing hiring in the district and then also would have to be responsible for managing the process moving forward too so I just I think that would be important Does anybody else have any input Board, the board, Why is it too much Board members being part yeah. of it is, is, is not... But I can never speak. So. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. I'm used to it. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. It's fine. <clears throat> oh, I, I would just... If, if there was concern about it, so what you're saying with board members being involved in the committee process, that that's not really, I think, some of the, what I would think, operational concerns that I have. Board members want to be part of interview processes and see what it's like and experience it. That, yeah, I think it's some of the other components and how it's structured that I just... No, I get the appearance of where we, we've got some of the language where we don't want to get down into the um, nitty-gritty of certain things and where, you know, when you're hiring, when you're hiring cleaners four, five, seven, eight, you're talking about things that go on or what you're doing, you're interviewing, we got nine positions. Um, I think the object and what we looked at is the board is if we chose not to be on that, that would be our option to waive that. So I, I just think that when we have something in parameters, and also I don't want to give anything uh, of where it could be perceived, oh, no, they only want to be in on this one and not that one. And I think that when you have an engaged board, you should then be able to send different members at all times so we can all learn and see how this process goes and be able to bring back the message of what we see. Um, and I think it helps really spread the message on how well it really goes. 
um, on how much work is put into it from the 20 questions that we all had. And we're all going to read a question and how things are going to go. And, you know, there, there, there was a lot of that process that we sat there, me and Diane, that we didn't know how it happened. You know, instead of the whispering that we hear, well, this is that, this is how this is hiring. So I think we're going to be the biggest cheerleaders on what being able to, to say, wow, it's really impressive how many departments, because you're taking from every department, and you say to yourself, uh, the common theme is when somebody is hiring 18 people, there's no one really to say what went wrong with it when there's 18 people. But when you're talking about 18 people that included from teachers, psychologists, it's all a part of the movement. It's all a part of how you're hiring that person. In the real world, you just have two people that hire somebody, and that's the end of it. In education, there's so many parts that are moving that most people don't even realize that. So I think when we were able to explain that, why it's 18, or do you need 12, or do you need 10, I think as then when you move along in the process, the group shrinks until it's handed off, until the final decision, which is the recommendation of the committee and then the, the superintendent, you know, understanding that process. I mean, that's where a lot of times we felt we didn't know. I didn't know until we started, we started digging into this and there's just things that was done before that are no longer done. And now we want to get right back into it and not to just be nosy, but we want to be able to understand. We want to be able to, you know, be what's making these decisions and how they're affecting us in the community. Sure. I don't think it's a matter of involvement. Again, I, I think that's not mm -hmm. where it comes back to. I just think it's more a matter of this is very, very prescribed. And I would say if you're not, if you're saying that you know, two board members will sit on a given committee and you choose to do it in one, in one instance but not in another, that will, I mean, that's not, not an issue for me as much as it is, honestly, for the board, potentially, mm -hmm. for somebody saying, why is it that the board felt it was appropriate or the board didn't feel this was important enough or why is it that you wanted to be on this one but didn't want to be on that one? I'm just saying those are the kind of things that could come up and that's some of the, the, the caution I think that was put out there uh, when just you know kind of looking at this policy was had, the caution legally or was it what it could be something that could be problematic it could potentially be problematic and somebody could you know make a claim I mean, people I make did, a claim for anything talk with her, well, just to say hey what do you see and just that this through our both season late labor relations and to be honest with you I, I welcome it I mean I, I think we have good processes I, to me the the least amount of I got not my concern or, or maybe some of the operational things that we have to put in place, having board members part of the different processes is, is, is fine. There, there are a variety of other pieces with the other groups and how people are represented, some people that are left off, how we might need more or less or whatever. Um, even things like sometimes we'll have, like you said, it, it speaks to their when interviews happen, how they happen. And there are some times where you'll have 15 or you know, eight to 10 interviews for different positions. So there are some potential financial impacts or participation in, in implications and things that could potentially happen by that. So that, that was all I would say. And I don't think we ever really had a chance to go line by line and, and talk about it as a group. So that's all I'm suggesting. Um, but I mean, every single one of us that sits here in this room doesn't cost you a penny except for a chair to sit in on an interview. Oh, but no, no, every not you. other person in that room costs a substitute or something else if it's done during school hours. So not always. Okay. Not always. And, 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 and you're right. You're absolutely right with some of our teacher positions. Yeah, when you have teachers and things, and when you do those. Um, and, and listen, I, I'm not challenging. I'm just I'm just presenting. It, it just being involved in a variety of levels, going through interviews in this district, and, and being the part of organizing them, and being the part of being on committees. I just would challenge that there are some pieces in here that we should probably work through and talk through. And if there are certain issues, like, hey, here's the concern we're hearing, or here's what we want to get at, and that I, I would just suggest that being having that conversation and involving me and involving some of our other stakeholders to go through and develop a, a system that works. Uh, would be a, a good way of going in developing this process, but have other stakeholders seen this policy? No. So that could. I be. didn't feel comfortable. I mean, I, I shared it with her. You know, I didn't know if it was mine necessarily to share, but uh, wasn't it on the agenda last month and then taken off the day of? Yeah. On the agenda. Yeah, we removed it to discuss yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's keep discussing because it's been two months. So. Right, it's been too long. Well, do you, want to, do you want to mark up the document? I wanted to create something to just share with you and go through the procedure because I don't, I don't know if 
you, you know, and we probably could spend two hours going through, let's, let's take a couple of our civil service positions, right? Let's take a couple of our teacher positions. Let's, let's go through some administrative hires. What does a central office hire look like versus an assistant principal or principal? You know, all that, that would be all I would suggest. And there is probably more to what I am, you know, have and have developed with regards to the type of questioning, types of interviewing, what you can ask, what you can't ask, some of the, I think I sent some email out that shared some of the processes and procedures, some logistical things. I know that's not necessarily covered here, maybe that's not the intent of it. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I completely understand what was the motivator to say, like, look, what was pre you know, presented as something's broken or something isn't working, because that would be helpful to know how I can assist in fixing it or adjusting it. Um, I, I would be happy to mark it up, but it isn't. I don't know if this document, Peter, is really, I don't know if it's marking it up, but just revisiting it from all the different positions and hearing kind of what currently happens and what things we might want to consider before we make any significant changes. And it's anything that you know the board is going to implement or do, we're going to execute. That, that's not the problem. And it isn't about having a board member any process whatsoever. I don't. I don't think any of our district yeah. leaders or any of our supervisors or managers would have any problem with that. And I think you have every right to be part of it, especially if you're hearing criticisms or concerns. I want you to, to be able to see that and be part of that. So I, I'm not trying to avoid adjusting or looking at a policy. I'm really not. I just think that there are some pieces there. And my apologies if I, I thought it was initially brought up and then it was tabled. I wasn't even aware it was on the agenda or going to be talked about. No one said, hey, we're going to. And then I just saw it and asked the question. and that, made the phone call and just said, hey, you know, before we go ahead with this, and part of the board manual isn't necessarily a district pop, I just said there are some pieces that we just might want to talk about or consider. And then I thought tonight was going to be some of that conversation. In the meantime, uh, we've been self-reflective in reviewing all the district things and saying, you know what, maybe we need to have some comprehensive plan, regardless of this, of additional resources and things for our administrators and for our, our directors and what type of training can I do and, and, and do for these people on the interview process, regardless of whatever is committee structure and all those kinds of things. So, I mean, this is a, obviously a huge part of what I'm responsible for and what I'm responsible for ensuring our administrators are responsible for. So, it, it it's not trying to avoid anything, not, not whatsoever. In fact, I welcome it and would encourage it. I just, I don't know if, I have been part of, or maybe have some key people part of going through the process. To you. So, but I, you know, I'm going to work and support and do, you know, whatever needs to be done and what you feel. But that that would be, you know, just my point. It, it's not the avoidance of it at, at all. I just some of these things I would suggest. You know, you, that's fine. But I just it, it will have a pretty significant impact in operations. Not right this minute. But I think especially as we move into the spring, potentially if, when we have replacements, retirements and such, just some things that we'll need to prepare for and talk with our union leaders about and how these, because a lot of these things would be a pretty significant change for our teachers, for our administrators, for our civil service staff, you know, and those, all those people, our managers and directors, all those people that are involved in that. Yeah, I think part of the reason reasoning behind this is just like with our operational manual we feel that things should be written down that things should be you know rules are just not out there and everybody knows them that uh, we wanted a, you know this was an important part of something that the board does so we wanted some kind of document to show what we go through it wasn't necessarily to solve a problem or um, or any of that but we just wanted a general written document, any document, you can't be real specific on any, you know, every little part, but um, we just wanted something that was general. And I think when you, what you're talking about there is that having something written down is at least a starting point, yes. you know, and when we, when we started redoing all the little P and the big P and started kind of looking at what we're doing, it's putting us focused on where we want to be and what we're doing, and as the conversations are tonight, there's a lot of things that are going on here that we're just really trying to, you know, chip away, chip away, chip away. And I think, honestly, I, I would believe that if we were to put something in place like this, it can be tweaked. But it, you can't tweak anything till it's in place. Yeah, I would just say that I, I would have hoped that, you know, that I would have been involved, that 
this wouldn't have been developed outside of the, you know, myself or John or anybody else. I've just, you know, what I'm saying if you're developing a policy that we have to implement, I, I would hope for maybe a more collaborative conversation. To the well, we've, you, we've, yeah. you've had the document for two months, at least, at least two at months. Least. You know what I mean? That, that to us is like, okay, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we well, doing? A lot of people put a lot of work into it. Yeah. So I, it, it's just, you know, we were, I was under the impression we were about 85, 90% done. The, the conversation I, I thought we had had was that this was more applicable for administrative hires. That was initially when it was presented. I thought they said, okay, well, let's just look at it just from the administrative side and not, not so much, you know, from your, your teachers or, or whatnot. But that's, but then the whole document speaks to beyond that. That's all I'm saying. So. And I agree with you. We, uh, I totally to what Diane said. And, and being here for as long and, and going through all of our files and saying, <laughs> I know. We, there it, really isn't a comprehensive manual. Mm -hmm. So. And no. that was my point of saying, like, it's been a self and, and saying we do need to have this and doing research and seeing what are different examples out there and what fits our process and protocol. So, you know, I probably have a 12 page working document that I just, I, I want it to look presentable to you and I want to go through it and talk to the certain stakeholders and make sure I've got every process. So that's what I've been working on. It's, it's probably on my desktop right now, but I, I might apologize if I misread how it was presented and what the expert you, you know, I don't think we had that conversation, so it wasn't my intent to, but I will tell you, to your point, I, I do agree with that 100%. We need to have, there should be a manual and a process that we can point to. Doesn't mean you're gonna read it every time, right? Because, but, and it should be presented to our administrators, our principals, our managers, our supervisors. Here is our criteria. Here is how we, here's some process stuff. Here is the type of questions. Here's what you ask. Here is what we value. Here is, here is who, what the committee makeup should look like. Here are the considerations for the committee. All of those things are pieces that I have and, and, and working on just to, to put together for. Now, I, don't, I don't know if that's a policy. You know, I don't have really any districts that I've seen where there's like some, you know, I know you talk a little P, big P. There's, there's no real policy about it, but there are some manuals and protocols that are shared that the districts have. Well, you Not call it whatever you, we're going to call it board procedure on what right. we're going to do. Well, I mean, it's really a district, yeah, right. it's just a district protocol and, and procedures. That, right. So, I, you know, some districts don't and, and have kind of like what they've done or they have individual forms and stuff. Others do have these, and so that, you know, I agree. We should have something written down that is consistent that you can point to or anyone can point to, or you can even hold, people can hold the district or administrators or even myself accountable to, that are you following, what was that? So that is what I've been working on. Do what you wish with this. Regardless, I will share with you and go through that with you at, you know, at your point and, you know, it, I think there was a miscommunication here with how it went or thinking, hey, you were gonna edit this or tweak it. I agree with Matt, I, I thought it was presented, here's something. And then I thought the conversation was, now really you want to be part of kind of administrators at district level and maybe some teachers, okay. And, and then I, the, the conversation kind of subsided and then, you know, other than the conversation we had last time. And so my apologies and it's. Yeah, that's why when we put it on the agenda, we thought it was a good time to at least bring it to discussion and where are we are with this. And, and it wasn't on this agenda. And we kind of, so when we got the review, I just said, hey, I thought this was something that we were going to talk about in review. So what do we want to do at this point? What's your feeling? What, do you, what thoughts, Ed? Let's talk about it. Talk about what? It's on the agenda. Let's talk about the hiring policy and decide what we want to do. It's on the agenda. Mary? But it's so late, though. Can we just have yeah. another work session? So you just got to put it off again? Right. Um, Everything. Well, what, but what? This is close in Winchester. We don't put that on. The <laughs> That's the one thing. But, but what do you want to talk about? I mean, I'm you know. Not, I don't give a shit. Pardon my language. No. Do whatever you want. I'm sick of not getting anything done. Anyone in else want water? Uh, yeah, well, it's not. In, there's a starting point. So where do we go from here? Let's not all get upset. No, no just, one's get upset. It's just there's. If you don't want to do it, they're not going to do it. So we'll let it go. I understand. I'm not afraid of the camera. There's a hundred parents at home, hopefully watching right now. I'll support whatever the rest of the board wants to do. You want a water? Nothing, I'm good. I don't like cold water. But well, I, it's I, on the agenda. Let's I'm either not, talk about it or table it. I'm not saying that we're going not to do do it. I, I just think discussion is good, you know. And if there are more points to look at, well, we'll look at them. I think it's only fair. I like I like open discussion. I don't even remember most of it because it's been so long. 
I just don't want to be faced with another person sitting in this room that we have to appoint to a position with their whole family here, and I didn't even know they were getting hired. No, no, I totally agree with you. No, I'm sorry. I don't want to look like an idiot anymore. I'm but, sick of looking like an idiot. But, if, but maybe we need to, to have it and go through it again, you know? So where do we want to go from here? Do we, do we want to have a sit down, you know, a couple people with, with John to see how he thinks the policy should be improved or what, what do we want to do? <coughs> well, then is it really becoming our policy then? No. I mean, where? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Then it's not board but, policy. But if there's parts of it that's problematic, then we should, we should fix it before order. we print it. So what do we want to do? Can you address these problematic areas and, yeah. and just send it to the board so that we have it? And go yeah, I literally couldn't tell you what was in. I mean, I know I like the cert cut some things about it, but it's been so long. I don't know if anything's been changed since I saw it last. Do no, it's, 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 no, the, we, it's we the original. It, we, nothing's been changed. Nothing's been changed yet. It yeah. would be very helpful. You know, I just, I just, you know, you just tell me what your goal is, right? What, what is it? That you that like Joey's saying like I don't like being having to vote on someone or, or maybe I wasn't part of the process so right. you know, I was new I wasn't part of the process but I literally walked into this room and voted on someone with a considerable salary knowing nothing right. and that's that it matters that it's a considerable salary or not a considerable salary mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. when you have somebody sitting in this room with their family and you know nothing yeah. what do you do you put your tail between and, your legs and you say yes. And Larry talked about being able to speak to how the process is operating. So, you know, how can we create opportunities for, you know, it, and there's a couple ways of doing that, right? You're on every single committee of every single one, or we go through the process and, and go through. What does each one look like? How does it look like? Or it might be, Tony, to your point, like there are certain, we, we need to have maybe building some things before board meeting, or and I'm not talking before the meeting, I mean, Prior to items going on the agenda, we have some discussion around qualifications, background, what was the rating of the interview, who was part of the process. I mean, those are things. How many candidates were interviewed? Correct. You know, these Correct. are the top three candidates. This is who we chose. We know nothing. Correct. We just have a name on a piece of paper and a salary. And, and you, you know, that's how it, and you're right. And that's how it happens in a lot. Like, ultimately, I think, you know, historically, and I, just in my experience in the district 15 years, is. You know, there's a lot of happening between the administrators, right, that, that's part of their job, that, that director or my, someone in my similar type position to oversee the process and run some of those and ultimately make a recommendation to the superintendent who is doing all that and then making a recommendation to the board for approval. So I wouldn't say some of your frustration is unique to West Seneca or the, how that process is, but if there are certain areas that we want to know more, we want to be able to defend it, or in their big, if they're bigger type positions, we. Like all of those things I think can be answered and I, I, I want to hear that because I can build in that infrastructure from at least to my point and, and work with Matt to be able to do that and cut those things out. I'm, I'm fine with that. I just have never had this dialogue from my perspective to say, okay, here are the top 10 things that we're hearing and we concerned about. Like when I presented, you know, what, what, what do you need from us? I just said, just tell me what you need. And if you're hearing something, come to me because I value my job too much to not do and, and meet. And my, I feel like my job is to support our, our, our district and, and to support your goals. So if there's something that I can do and put in place, um, a lot of the policy is good, Peter. I just think the way that it is structured in red for our school, for our school system doesn't necessarily, if you just ask my opinion, doesn't necessarily work. It's either too restrictive in, in certain areas or too open in certain areas. So I would just say, and if there's certain pieces of it, like this is really a priority. We, we hate that we have to get subs or, okay, what are the pros and cons of that? Some, some we don't maybe, we don't need to get a sub, right, potentially, because it's Daryl Hurdle in his role can step away for an hour. Now, granted, okay, well, something's not getting done. Well, we don't necessarily always install a sub cost, but all right, well, maybe we want to push those to after school. What does that mean? Are people going to expect to have overtime? Are teachers going to be part of the committee? Are they going to want to have some sort of compensatory time for them? Are they going to want to? Like, those are just some things that we will need to work out uh, to consider before we do that. Um, and, and some of the communication flow and pizza. So I, that's all I'm saying is that there are some bigger pieces in here that we want to consider that could be cost drivers, that could be 
potential liability issues for a board or a district that I just would suggest we want to hammer out. But you know, give me give me your top gripe on, on, on a hiring process and procedure, and then let's develop something that will get at that in addition to folding in all the things that we do. Because um, there's a lot of hires, obviously the bad ones or the ones that you might hear about stick out. Uh, and there's a lot that happen that you probably never hear about that you approve on. And, and, and I would argue are very good, clean, thorough processes. Um, and, and maybe you get to experience one right now and, and, and one Larry and Diane did. But, and I know Jan has been part, I think Jan was on my interview when I came into the district. Um, but, you know, so I, I agree, we need to have something in writing. So we had something back then. Where is that? Do we have any? I'll tell you something. Sure. I don't think we could tell you. Right. I'll tell you. Yeah, we okay. know. Yeah. All right. I and know it's because good. <laughs> I was, we had liaison positions, okay, back then. And each board member had a liaison. I was with the HR. I'm the one that did most of the interviews. And what happened at that time, and I'll take my mask off for this, is the committee would meet, and it was mostly from assistant principals and up. The, the board was responsible, and then they would send, that committee would send two to three representatives to the board, and the board actually did the picking who was the uh, person, okay? Then it changed to, then, um, depending on superintendents, it changed to where the committee was involved, the board wasn't involved in it, but we put an extra layer where the superintendent would have a separate one. There was times where we uh, interviews would go through the committee, then the administrators, then the board. I mean, it changes, to, but I just think right now a lot of this frustration is we need something, a document yeah. to follow, not only for us, but with, with our policy or you know, procedures that we do as a board, is because when I'm not here or you're not here or you're not here, the next person coming in has a, a starting document. Right. 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 And, and that's why this was developed, so yeah. that we have, a, you know, in something. The district, you, you appoint based on recommendations, right? And, and it, is a, it is a district responsibility to be able to create something. And I totally agree with you, Mary. I interviewed for an assistant principal. I had a building level committee. There was two board members. I moved on to the superintendent and assistant superintendents, and then there were two board members on that. And then ultimately I met with the superintendent and the board together right. as a kind of a final interview before being approved. That's the process I went through. I, I can't speak to how and why it evolved. <laughs> yeah, I will tell you about. that I came into the position two years ago. Our structures were have been established. Granted, board member participation has waxed and waned, I think. I, I can't speak to why or how, but for the most part, committee structure, timelines, expectations, goals, question development, and, and those things have remained fairly consistent. Mm -hmm. um, so I, John, it's just that we don't want surprises. Yeah, and we want to be involved. Yeah, and, and I, I think that's the thing. Right. Because we just and don't want to say nothing against okay, that so, particular person. It's so just we just yeah. spent forty minutes deciding whether we want to discuss this or not. Yeah. No, we are discussing. I, we're there. That's yes. what I want. I want to discuss yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I think was we when, notes, when, when a board member comes on as, as Mrs. Petcha was. Uh, we are not involved in hiring policy, but we are in the approval process. process. Right, so we approve. We don't hire, but we approve. Right. And we have to have faith in our leaders to pick. All right? And I mean, that's where it becomes a but. I think inquisitively, we all want to know how it works, right. how it's involved, mm -hmm. what goes mm -hmm. on. And then you kind of, you know, you, you know that it, it, it's, as I always say, it's tight and right. You know that it's happening and what's going on. It's and fair. You can, it's fair. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and at no, no point do I'm not them, saying that it's never no. been fair. I'm, I'm not saying right. that okay. right. saying the per people presume it differently, okay? You could have a member. I mean, we've gone through this. I've been on this board for a long time. We've gone through where board members have sat in and felt very um, shifted that, that this, what they thought was happening in that meeting or the interview came out totally different. So what I'm saying is I think people perceive it differently. Having a board member, and this is my push, I've been pushing for this for a while now, a board member can come back and you two sat on it, you can explain to the board why that committee chose that person. What were the strengths and weaknesses than us 
approving someone that we've never even met or, or had any idea. Sometimes it's been to the point where our, we're hiring, like I, I didn't even know. Right. I mean, I went to a particular area and this person was hired. I didn't even know this person was hired and they were on that school property. I just yep. think it's, it's rushed too fast and the board needs to have input in at least knowing the process and knowing what, you know, what happened during that interview and why that person rated so much higher than other people on that, or in that um, interview process, that interview. I mean, maybe we have one person that comes in an interview or maybe we have 20. I mean, there was a point when the board actually went through the applications and we had an A, B, and C pile. Maybe it's, maybe I, I'm just saying yeah, it's For certain changed. positions, you might say, hey, maybe there's some background. Maybe it's, hey, for this teacher recommendation that we're expecting, there was 42 applicants. I mean, maybe it's just some data and some statistics. Maybe it's sitting mm -hmm. in front of it. Maybe when new board members come on, I should do a, a training, training and talk to them about, but I will tell you, when you asked, like it was the question was asked, like where's the pot, like, and when I'm, I can, you know, and, and we, I agree with you, like we don't have something, like we have different pieces, and screening and telephone reference track and stuff, and that, you know, that that is something that, and I will have that whether you approve it or not. It's not something that I would put to you to approve. But that's a priority and, and something that... Well, yeah, I would think for protection for HR, for anything, that what you've got is you've got to have a starting point. Yeah. And I think the days of the A, B, C, and the board picking it, that's a human, that's a human resource nightmare uh -huh. that could be happening. So uh, times have changed over the years. But I think at some point where we've gone is we're, we've got to keep staying current and updating so that when you pass the baton, people can pick up and read and change and move along where were we going. So I guess... Yeah. A base. Yes, Good. Good. absolutely. And there's no base. I totally agree with you, and I will tell you, and I think my base that I will share with you, regardless of what you do mm -hmm. here and decide and I'll support, I, you know, is, is, you know, it's a 15 page document that goes through a variety of things that I believe we need to cover and make sure that our administrators are covered upon. It is also a lot of internal specific processes and then also some very global things. Who do you need to include? Why? And well, we're, really we're at that point, John, I'll tell you, and that's great because if you have something like that, yeah. let, let us see it. Mm -hmm. And honestly, we have it before the meeting of Tuesday. I mean, before we can do, right, our next, when's our next school board meeting? Next Tuesday? The 9th. The 9th. So I think we can get something done and get to something done before then. I mean, because we are at that point. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, uh, yeah, I, had, I had some final conversations about certain pieces with them with our labor relations person, just to make sure that okay. we're protecting district's interest in some, in some of the things and how we do things. So. I don't take it lightly, but we're going to create a document. And I, absolutely, I can, I can tell you something by tomorrow. I can tell you something right. by the end of the week or early next week. That's fine. And I feel bad because the last impression I would I would want you to give that wow, you're a boy. That's not the case. And I totally misread. I, I thought it was there. I thought we ended on we want to be part. We want to be part of some of these administrators. Okay. I never heard Jody ever say what the heck. I feel this way. Now, Grant, I I, I don't know. I, I don't ever want you to feel that way. Yeah. And there are some easy things for you to say, listen, I just, when someone questions a CSEA hire, I want to know why. All right, well, here's the process. Why do you come on in and, and you can sit through a couple of them? Now, you want to commit on writing that you're going to be in every single one, and, and I'm telling you, you're going to have a slew of emails. It, it, it's, we need to talk about some internal processes to get it. That's mm -hmm. really something that the board wants to do, and man, like, but you are right. Ultimately, we have, yeah, there is some obligation that this is the work that we have to do and present to you, but if you don't like the work that either I'm responsible for overseeing or anyone, just tell me and I'll fix it to meet your needs. And you're right, every board kind of changes, it evolves. And I went through a pretty extensive process that had board members along the way. And I liked it, and it was work, and it was thorough, and I don't know why when I came into this and we there hasn't been board members, and I don't, I don't know when that changed, but you know. It's not gonna change, but it's amazing that you were in one, you were seeing it, you were a part of it, but there's nowhere is anything written down that we kept that record. Yeah, there's, not, well, there's records of interview processes, but not like an overall guiding document. And I agree with you. I am shocked yeah. that as well. I will tell you, though, we're not alone. Um, and I will tell you some of what I've seen from districts that this board has talked about as, as good role models have little to nothing as well. But there are some that I thought were good. And I thought, you know what, I'd like that they've included this, this, and this. And how can we fold that into ours? So that's kind of what I've been doing. 
I know you didn't necessarily ask me for it, and I think we're getting it, but I just felt like that's something that we needed and something that I wanted to be able to present and, and have copies to share with you and go through with you all. So right. well, I think if you can get it. And if you don't, you don't like it, you want to say, hey, we want to have our board proceed to do this thing. That's fine. No, I, but we also don't want to do anything reckless, but we're also at the point is, hey, you know what? We're doing what we feel is the best interest, and we want to be able to get something down. We also, you know, we don't want to do something that is um, looking, you know, not being responsible on what we're doing and how we're doing it. But we were under the, I was under the impression that we were about 80 to 85 percent done, except a couple of little bit of a parts, and it sat for two months you know, a while, and we were wondering, like, and but this was the place that we figured, you know what, let's have the conversation. Let's talk about it. Let's get it out there. Find out what's happening, where we are, and let's move forward so we can cross this off and work on the other things that we need to get done as a board. We have a parking lot. I mean, John, some yeah. of them are we so have simple. A parking lot that doesn't it. get looked at. But some of the things are so simple as... So-and-so was hired on the agenda and shares a last name with an administrator in the building. Did that person get their job because... Sure. It, it actually happened to be your last name. Did they get their job because their last name was Cervoni? Gotcha. Don't Press even know that person. Exactly. Yeah. I agree with you. But... I agree with you. Us, but... but so the it's, 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 and that's something that not we, knowing need to, that. we need to talk about because... When do you get the information and how should you get the information? On the agenda. Do you have a chance? I know, but obviously that needs to... Listen, part of it is, I'll be honest, you got to trust sure. Matt and me to do my job and what, you, what, what we are responsible to do. But also, how can we change things so you don't ever have to feel this way? Because I would never want you to feel that way. Sure, but you have to understand, too, we're responsible to all of the people that voted for yeah. us. Yeah. And something as simple as so-and-so shares a name with a district. With our okay. director of HR. Tell me about it. Okay, so did I pick that person over this person because they were related? And, you know, jo Jody, I mean, you're giving nepotism. you're giving specific feedback, and I, I mean, it's sure, I'm going to tell you these that these are my um, frustrations. That, yeah. So, but you're giving that specific feedback right sure. now, and I'm going to tell you that that it's, there's there's not nepotism happening, but at the but same no. time. If it's a question that you have, certainly I would I always want you to ask that. You've already listed a couple. You've listed like three things here that yep. you wanted to be able to talk about, which is guiding and instructive for us. If we're saying, okay, here's a specific concern. This is something we can look to be able to figure out a way to address, so that you don't have to question that moving no, forward. No, it's just. I mean, Maybe some of it's as simple as transparency. Hey, yeah. For the record, I don't know that person. Right. I met that person once. It, when they actually were recommended, I was never part of any of that process or anything. But they do have the same same as me. Interestingly, sure enough. do. And I think there is probably a second or third relation somewhere down the road because that's not a common name. But maybe there's a training, and, and, and this document will provide us a guide that I can go through. And listen, if you don't like it or the pieces that you want to adjust, but I will tell you, I've never heard you say to me that you have to with the hiring process. Now, I am not intricately involved in every single one, but they are my responsibility. So I would say don't ever harbor any concern oh, no. or question. Call me, email me, or reach out to Matt, and I will investigate or find out if you're like, I wish I had more information, or before someone goes in the board agenda, I would like this information, or this information included in our administrative, like, please. Sure. And, or, if Peter, you, you're like, yeah, I don't like this part of this, or how much does it cost you to do this, or or even Larry saying, here's what I'm hearing from the people in the community about, exactly. about some of these processes. You need to tell me that, and I will give you the answer, but I, I didn't have, and this is very valuable to me, but... I never had any of this. All of a sudden, I just said, hey, we want this. And I just said, whoa, I, before we do this, we should talk about it. And it was like, well, we, we really, I thought it was, we just want to be part of some administrative processes. I thought, fine. Then I thought it was done, and that's what we were doing. I put it in place. I let our administrators know this is what, we, you know, we're going to start involving board. And then it was on agenda again, and that's when I, so just from my perspective, that's how it went down. I said, we should talk about this. And in the meantime, I've just been putting together some of our putting together something that I think would be a good representation of what we do that would protect us, that would be consistent for us. Well, I suggest that we set something up then and get something quick. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. Before the next board meeting. Before the next board meeting to get onto the agenda. I mean, it's... And then the training, too. I think... A, yeah, a training shoot. You can I, I, roll I, it I, in. We should yeah. do that every year. Mm -hmm. I've already talked with Jay, Jay Brinker about, you know, we do this training with our administrators. And we have a relatively veteran administrative staff, but there are some new people and reviewing and sitting whether I go to the retreat or over the summer, and we talk about processes, procedures, and expectations of a hiring protocol, almost like, a, like an in-service that I would run with them. 
and just making sure that they, because our administrators, a big part of their job is yeah. recommending hires and impresses, so they have to be consistent. Mm -hmm. And it only takes one to go rogue and make the whole process slow. Mm -hmm. So, and to talk about and look at. You know, one of the things on there was a non-disclosure agreement. I will tell you, I generated one and created one about a year and a half ago. You know, what was even talking about hiring processes? We ran into, we, we needed to maybe work through that process a little bit more and how it implicated some of our bargaining units. So, there are some pieces and nuances that we just, <laughs> that you wouldn't think would be a big deal, but just sometimes are, we just need to work through them, that's all. And that was my point. Um, so. So can we table this for tonight to get more information and put it on the agenda for next month with our board goals? I, I will have to rescind my motion. And, okay. And I will well, I think like anything, we need to set something up on a date yeah, of right. when and we're going to do this. I want to table it for further mm -hmm. discussion. Yeah. And we need the documentation yeah. that if you yeah. send it to us and then... So how are you? How are you going to handle this? You're going to are you going to mark up the document? You're going to send additional documentation. You, the, the document I created is not a markup of this. It okay. Is a, it, is, it is because it is a it's a whole district manual as far as some of this stuff is on there. But I, listen, it, I could probably pull it off right now for you, but it's in kind of draft form and kind of mm -hmm. not not how I want to maybe share something of my work with you know the board mm -hmm. of education. But I, it is to a point where I can share it with you within days and. I don't know if it's going to meet all your needs or desires, and that would be up to you to decide. But I think we can well, there's also a part is what's workable for you with the units and everybody that's mm -hmm. involved. Right. We get that part, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just like anything that when there is an issue, when you have the Board of Education stepping in, when there is controversy and say, no, no, we were involved, this is what happened, right. mm -hmm. it goes away. Right. It's just right. the, the whispering, oh, yeah. So can I just ask then, so if John sends you something, over the next few days or so, I mean, does somebody, do a few people want to come in and sit and talk with him about yeah. that's what I guess I'm asking. Is that I, we need to put it somewhat to bed so we can move on what to I'm other. Saying, it would be yeah. in advance of the ninth, is sure. what I'm saying. Yeah. Peter, I would then, be fine with that. I could set up a Google meeting. Yeah, well, it, it depends on what you're going to send. Go, we'll go through it. Yeah. Right. We'll, we'll go through it and then go from there. Yeah. And, yeah. Can we just send it then and you, you say, listen, we feel as though we want well, to have Well, I mean, further. everybody's got it. Well, that's what I mean. We yes. said the yeah. whole group. But, I mean, but like yeah. anything, we kind of had Mary and, and Pete and it working on this a little bit mm -hmm. of a slice yeah. group. And Jody, right, was on yeah. it? Or Ed? Just no, Mary and Pete? Mary and Pete. Okay, so if they get that and they look at it and they bring it to us, I think that makes it a little bit more to where then right. we look at it independently yeah. yep. and we make our own choice mm -hmm. on where we are with it. It's but, not necessarily a document that I am suggesting that you would whatever you want with it but it's it, it's an in, it's a protocols manual right John, we must right. protect the, right. we must protect the organization though too so there's a lot of parts that i'm with you on this that but we also want to protect our interests and what we want to do so we need something right okay. are you and looking I, you're not looking for us to take your document and approve it as board policy no, are you looking at a submitting us your document and then decide whether we want to continue implementing something or change what we have i just want to get completely clear on it so, because your thing sounds like a whole plan, like a, a hiring. I think when either Diane or someone said, hey, send us, send us your hiring manual, whatever, and I go to look and review the files, and there's not. there isn't one. It is concerning to me in my role. And that's kind of when my process started. It's, it's relatively comprehensive, whatever. So I have a manual or packet that is something that I would use with future trainings with our administrators to make sure, and our leaders, to make sure we have consistency. And I believe that we do now. Oh, yeah. Just to have something that we can point to. That's I think great. Every time right. someone's going to have an interview, they're going to flip through my manual. Probably not, but if <laughs> annually, I will review it. I will share that with you. But we don't need to approve that. I, no. Correct. Nothing for you to approve. No. That. Right. So that's why I just want to get clarification. What What's the next step? Are we looking to not? Review John's document and create I, our yeah. hiring policy. Well, Based again, I haven't been involved in any of this. I just. I, my, my only concern was Pardon approving me? something that doesn't necessarily align that could open the district up to some degree of inconsistency or liability that would have significant operational implications. And doing it for your board manual guidance document is fine because I think it gets at the point. You want to be involved, you want to have consistency. I'm getting at that how I think I should and how we should as a district. And I think it will, I think it'll be satisfying, but you, know, you might see pieces like, hey, can you add this, or this is something that I don't know, and I think 
Yeah, we should have that back and forth. And we might end up changing the whole document. Who knows? I mean, that's what's good. We're going to look at what he has right. and then go from there. And we'll from there. I'm, fine. I'm fine with that. We'll build from yeah. there. Yes. Mine is much more a workable, not, not more, work, it, it is more of a guidance document that administrators can use. Right, but we're not looking to approve that. No. No. no, right. no. Okay. I just want to see and gain knowledge and process, use it to create our right. policy. Correct. I think no. it speaks to now to have it. Right. Some of it is going to be more. It, it, listen, we can get it. Mary, everyone can look yeah. at it. Mary can Peter can kind of bring me questions. We can talk about it, and then whenever you decide, we can we can talk about it again and just say, and just you know, I would just say, give it to me straight. Here's what we think it should include, what it does, and here's what we're worried about. Here's what we're not, and, and, and then put me to work to try to get it to what you believe is meets the needs. But okay, that would be my suggestion. Are we all set? So, Mary, do you want to rescind your motion? I did. Okay. I, I made a motion to table it. Okay. Can I have a second on that? I'll second. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried 7 to 0. So we're going to table this, and John's going to send us, Dr. Savoni's going to send us um, the information, and Mary and Pete are going to check it over very thoroughly. The rest of us will kind of... Look You're at going to be getting and, in it as well, right? Yeah. But yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Everybody. Yeah. 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 Well, we everybody. Okay. Can I have well, a... Before you ask for that motion, can we d just decide something here? Can we move our meetings back to 530 and give us a little bit more time? I looked at Bob's presentation beforehand. I looked at... I knew the principals were coming. I knew we were going to be here for a long time doing the stuff we needed to get done. If we can't handle working until the job is done, do we want to set parameters now for board meetings, 5.30 to 8, 5.30 to 9, just so it can be a little more, like, we're, we may end up being here for another, I don't know, hour? No. no. Two no. hours? No. No, we, can we should table be here that long. I don't know. Yeah. What I'm asking is, and I'm very frustrated by, is every meeting we have, and again, this is probably a lot of it's my fault because I talk too much. But every meeting we have at the end, we're either rushing or we're postponing because we got to get out of here. Let's set some goal. Either let's set parameters for the meetings where no matter what, nine o'clock, we're done. So there's no more of this. Or it just, I feel like certain things end up getting pushed away and we never talk about them again because we're always in a rush to leave. It's late. We've all done stuff all day. So I can't, I know some people have jobs and different things, but. Yeah. Can 5.30 buy us a little more time? Can, I mean, or does nothing solve this problem? Is it just, is it the nature I think of the it, I think it, Do we, we need more meetings? The, the principals speaking tonight, um, there was a lot of good feedback back and forth, which was great. Um, but, you know, that took a chunk of time. So, and then uh, Dr. Merkel coming in, that took a chunk of time. Yes, so maybe and that was great, in too. The, was right, great. but, but maybe myself, have those in different evenings in the future even afraid to ask questions yes. just because it's like yeah. oh i know like i know everyone's going to want to get out of here and yeah. like it just so maybe pre-planning a little bit better who our presenters are to know what time frame yeah, they're going to I present kinda, on I, I guess yeah i mean you guys tell me do we, i mean we want to try to end a meeting by a certain time or, like i i tell you this i come here i don't know when we're gonna leave right me either i, I just I've, you know i i but I was under the impression that we were going to go by building, by building, by building, and then um, you know the group that came together. Um, it was good. yeah. I mean yeah, it was good angles. Very good. It kind of shows how they work together. It does. Group. It absolutely did, and it hit home on some of the things that I think that we were really um, that we're passionate about. That mm -hmm. now that we look, you talk about effective areas. So I, I don't look at the time essence of it. What we yeah. do. I don't you know, either, but I, I'm taking I, I'm taking into consideration like the of everybody. Of late, I get out of work. I haven't seen my kids. Well, no. I'm with you. Oh, my yeah. kids don't want to see No, me. I'm just saying with my, yeah. I'm saying my family. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. So can, um, we, can we work yeah, on so, so, so now we're spending a lot of time just on this. So so <laughs> what do we want to do? What, what's your motion? What do you want to do? I'm not making a motion. I'm just asking either, again, if, I don't know. It just feels like we're always cramming and stuff. Well, I don't think meeting. we're always, okay. you know. I just, I'm just. And, and, and I, and I Just make sure I we have, don't have a couple big presentations in one night. You know, the work sessions do tend to be a little bit longer. Yes. Because if you're bringing in presenters. Yes. Whereas, early? yeah, the, the meetings, the board meetings yeah. usually go pretty quick. Yeah. But maybe maybe after we see how, the, like, the next work session goes, maybe we reevaluate. Right. Because, honestly, after 10 o'clock, yeah. you're losing yes. me. 
Right. My right. Pillow's calling yes. me. Not yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just being honest. Yeah, and, and I, I think, I I think we next focus. work session we have the elementary principals, and I'm assuming they're going to do the same sort of thing, uh, you know, work together to do a presentation. I don't remember. I think it's just the elementary principals. I think it's just right? the elementary well, principals, so we should be in good shape there. Right. Okay. okay. If not, we can adjust. Now can, I, I think it is, though. now can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll motion. Um, I'll second. Second. Ed. Mr. Bedient. Do I adjourn first or? No. Oh, no, 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 okay, okay, all right. Oh my gosh, that's late. Um, okay, uh, we, need to, we need to go into executive session to discuss the employment history of a particular person and matters leading to the appointment and, and, and the appointment and employment of particular persons. Can I have a motion to go into executive? A motion. Ms. Pesha, um, can I have a second? Okay, Mr. Krotowski, and all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we will not be back, as probably everybody's out there sleeping anyways, uh, we will not be back after executive session. Okay, thank you, and everybody have a good, safe night. So we won't be doing any voting? No, no. Thank you. I don't care.